Hello, everyone. Once Welcome. Welcome, Arbonauts and folks who are coming by for the first time. Welcome to Bag of Giving. Uh, it is my great pleasure uh, to welcome everybody to another charity event and a really awesome tabletop role-playing experience to come. My name is Arvin Elleron. I am the host and owner of this channel, uh, which has been running for a long time, which has a lot of focus on story-based gaming and narrative content and tabletop content as well. And it's my great pleasure to have what I think is the third Bag of Giving event uh, on this channel. We are now the official uh, channel for the Bag of Giving organization and the various uh, one-shots that they will be running throughout the uh, year of 2022, and we could not be more honored to be able to do so. Uh, normally, at this time, when I'm introducing a stream, I talk a lot about ways to support the channel, but the only thing I'm going to do today is to ask you to follow the channel, which is a great thing, and beyond that, to ask you to look at the various places that you can, uh, including things like uh, Bag of Giving. If you type in exclamation point bag, uh, you can find out more about this organization. We're going to get links up in a little bit uh, to be able to allow you to donate to the uh, beneficiary of today's charity event, which is the Reach Out Response Network. Uh, and then also exclamation point Nightfell, N-I-G-H-T-F-E-L-L, -L, will give you information about the particular game that is being played. And that's what we're going to be doing tonight. With that said, though, I am now uh, going to uh, hand things over. I'm going to unmute myself so the folks know that we're ready to go. I'm going to apologize again for having interrupted them, as I no doubt did by accident. And then I'm going to unmute them and I'm going to transition us over to the screen that will reveal the crew that we have got for you today. And as you can see, they are here and ready and looking good, I think. Um, actually, quite good. Uh, and so I am very pleased to have them here. Um, and I am going to hand things over to uh, one Mr. Brandon Crilly to talk a little bit about this crew and about the game before us. Brandon, the floor is yours. Perfect. Thank you very much, Greg. Um, yeah, looking very fabulous. We were saying on the, the stream before we came on um, that uh, some of us feel a little uh, underdressed uh, <laughs> in terms of how people have come out uh, for this. But yeah, uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is uh, Brandon Crilly. I'm uh, one of the people behind uh, Bag of Giving, uh, this new kind of streaming series that we have here, which um, is has now found its home on uh, uh, Arv's uh, channel here. And we are phenomenally, phenomenally grateful uh, to be here and uh, to you folks for coming to watch. Um, so yeah, I'm an Ottawa-based author of uh, science fiction and fantasy. I do some work uh, with CanCon, which is our, our local con here, and wear many, many, many hats that I won't go into because this is not about me. Um, so if uh, you are unfamiliar with um, what we are playing today, uh, we are playing uh, Nightfell, which is uh, an original setting for D&D uh, &D, uh, 5e, uh, which was developed by Mana Project Studios, which is a, a publisher out in Italy. Um, and so they've uh, made up this uh, dark fantasy horror setting, um, which uh, was kickstarted last year. And it's they're just in the process of releasing everything. So backers have stuff and you can go and pre-order it and stuff. It is a phenomenally cool setting. Um, in terms of what it offers, there's a bunch of new mechanics that are in there. I'm really selling it on their behalf, apparently. Um, but uh, there's things in there like uh, soul points um, and the influence of the moon, uh, birth moons, uh, mechanics that you might see come up in our game today. Um, so uh, just to give you a little bit of a, a background on Nightfell. So um, our Nightfell adventure today takes place in the darkened world of Yermin. Uh, during the period known as the Lunar Age. Uh, in this world, uh, the sun is a blackened disk poisoned uh, by the touch of uh, Enfirin, which is the dark mirror um, and underworld, which kind of encroached on uh, the material plane about a century ago. What light exists comes from the moon, uh, long a source of influence and power over the material plane, and now worshipped by many as the true source of power in this land. Dark creatures uh, are rampant across the world, um, and the survivors of the sun's death cling to the world's few remaining settlements or have given themselves over to the darkness. In the 115th year of this lunar age, which is where our story takes place, um, almost no one is left who remembers what the sun even looked like before. Uh, characters in the setting uh, facing the challenges of Yermin um, are either those who have embraced the powers of the night uh, in order to turn them against its own creatures, or those who are standing as paragons of hope and faith uh, for the survivors. Um, and one organization uh, to do this is the Watchers of Alper, which is the group that our players uh, belong to, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, in a few minutes. But uh, before I get to that, um, I'd like our players to introduce themselves and their characters um, and uh, in no particular order, uh, Derek, would you like to go ahead? 
Yes, um, I am Jotha. Uh, I am a cleric. Um, I uh, come from the Edri tribe people. Uh, we worship, uh, well, we follow a shaman and uh, we believe that, um, you know, we've got to make do with what we've, we've got going here and we're not, you know, into making new gods and other stuff. Um, Jotha is very wise. He is ready for the dark, but um, he appears like a, a normal, like uh, sorry, like a male who looks like me. Um, but he's got some pretty big dents in his head. Uh, some obvious uh, head injury trauma has happened. Um, he sometimes mixes things up. He sometimes forgets things. He sometimes uh, gets things wrong. He sometimes forgets things. Um, so. <laughs> Um, yeah, but he's still very wise and a very uh, useful cleric, uh, despite the fact that he sometimes gets the details wrong. That's all. Um, Arlie, do you want to go next? Sure. I am Baraya. I am a fallen Azamar, and I'm a loner, except for this group, who is trying to find uh, his way through the darkness and cling to the light that remains within him. And I am a paladin, um, but I'm neutral good. So I'm one of those. And I'm kind of like a skinny goth looking dude who's very, uh, who looks very androgynous and is, you know, you wouldn't think that he is as strong as he is. But he is. He will whoop yo. <laughs> Deceptively strong, and you find out when it's too big. I love it. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Uh, Jane, I'll go to you next. Hey, I actually remembered to unmute it. We'll see how long that lasts. I. <laughs> So I'm Jame, and I, as usual, I am playing a fighter a character. I, it's very unusual for anyone who's ever seen me play, I'm sure. I, her name is Anirith. I'm sorry, her race is Anirith. Her name is Andrinan. And she's one of the really interesting Nightfell classes, which is the medium, which means essentially that she has a ghost that she has a relationship with. I, it's a consensual possession and a relationship where she can actually use it to fight and use it as a weapon. So I'm really looking forward to that. I, her background is that her parents were one of the group that turned to the darkness and really started to lose their way. And she decided early on that she didn't want that. So she decided to forge her own way. She became a mercenary who essentially was out to protect people who couldn't protect themselves. And that was a bit of a rocky road. So she's a little bit older, a uh, little bit cranky and definitely still trying to hold on to that hope that I uh, caused her to take this route in the first place. Visually, she's middle-aged, uh, pretty battered. I mean, being a mercenary in this world is not an easy life. So she's very scarred. Uh, has a lot of physical and mental and emotional trauma that she's gone through. So she's not quite as forgetful as you know, Jotha maybe, but she can be a little bit cranky about things sometimes. Perfect. Uh, and Susan. Hi, hi. I'm Susan. <laughs> and I am Sarasi, an Ishtrim, which is an overseas people. Surprise, I'm from overseas. And she's brown and she looks like me because I'm her. Um, and she is a rogue assassin. So like, I'm supposed to be a bad person, but I kind of am like, eh, it's not so, so fun being bad because no one wants to hang around with you. So I decided to be kind of chaotic good. Um, so that's why I'm here. And um, I'm a night nomad, so I just wander around at night, apparently, and I love that. That's, like, my fun thing to do, so I'm not scared of the dark. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm here for chaos and good times, and if you bother me, I will poison your ass. Oh, sorry, bad word. <gasps> I will poison you. <laughs> and um, and don't bother my friends. And I like fashion. That end. <laughs> 
Uh, so many people are going to get poisoned in this game. Um, this is gonna be great. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we're going to uh, dive into it. So um our uh, our four characters as i mentioned um are uh, members of an organization called the watchers of alper uh, who are a militia group um protecting the uh, the people of alper and you can see the map on our our stream of uh, the region um all the the maps and everything we're going to be using today um also designed by mana project studio and their artists uh, so very grateful to them um yeah so uh, the watchers of alper uh their role is basically to protect uh, people from uh, both everyday and supernatural threats. Um, and they were founded about 20 years ago uh, by an individual named uh, General Ivar Magnuson, uh, nicknamed The Guardian, um, who is largely seen to be like, you know, kind of the whole, not quite wholly protector, but definitely the protector of this region, the people that, you know, everybody knows that, um, you know, The Guardian uh, is watching out for you. Um, and uh, trying to keep back the darkness is, is uh, his reputation. Um, and they continue to monitor uh, the region, send out expeditions uh, from a fortress called the Northern Lookout, uh, which is where you folks have been uh, living and staying uh, for the past few weeks as you've been undergoing your training. Um, so a little bit of background to uh, set the stage here. Um, you folks were uh, undergoing a lesson with uh, one of the sergeants uh, who you've been serving under, a gentleman named Sergeant Fissus. Um, and uh, as he was going on and on about, you know, the history of Alper and how important Alper is and, and you know, kind of droning on and on and on, at least to some of you, um, about uh, the history of the region, um, a messenger arrived at the northern uh, lookout, um, came rushing into the courtyard um, and basically collapsed almost at your feet, um, coated in dried blood. Um, and this uh, individual, uh, young human, um, you know, kind of like, you know, reaching out and, and grabbing onto to Jotha's foot um, said, uh, you know, help me, I, I bring urgent news uh, from Dark Mist. Uh, we need immediate help um, in, in the Crystal Mounts. There, there was an attack. Uh, there, there was an incident. There, there are Krampus on the loose. Um, we, we need someone uh, now. We need, like, assistance is needed immediately. Um, and after, you know, going, you know, after being healed and, and being cared for, um, this messenger explained that um, there have been attacks on uh, lumbermen um, on the other side of the, uh, the Crystal Mount, the mountain range where uh, your fortress is located. Um, and they found evidence that the creatures responsible um, yeah, is a band of Krampuses, um, who are these kind of large hulking beasts. Um, that uh, are known to be wandering around uh, the region quite a bit. Um, and uh, there's evidence that suggests that uh, as much as a dozen Krampus um, are hiding in the mountains somewhere. And so you folks um, were basically volunteered um, to uh, be sent out from the Northern Lookout um, across the Crystal Mounts uh, to look for your, uh, or to look for these Krampus and hopefully um, destroy them before they can uh, uh, kill any other civilians or cause any more mayhem um, in the region. Um, and so uh, Sergeant Fissus um, is uh, accompanying you and you were sent out and that was a few days ago now and you, you've been trekking through um, the, uh, the Crystal Mounts. So you are about kind of at the northern, uh, northern edge of the Crystal Mounts at this point, um, slowly making your way out of the mountains. So I don't know if you can see, oops, so I'm a little unfamiliar with, with Roll20, but on the map, um, the, uh, the kind of the northern part of the mountain range, um, just below the white flatland is where you folks are right now. Um, and uh, before you folks left, you were each given um, from the, the quartermaster, at, at, quartermaster at the northern lookout, um, two regular healing potions. So you can each add two regular healing potions to your inventory. Can we get some poison prevention potions? I, I don't know why. I feel like they may come in useful. You know what? Make me a persuasion check. So uh, take a d20. Uh, so roll, roll me a d20 um, and add, if you have a bonus for persuasion, um, if you don't, um, just your charisma bonus. First roll of the game. <laughs> and I actually rolled well because my life isn't at risk. Uh, so 21. <laughs> Holy crap, okay. Um, so yeah, so the quartermaster in the Northern Lookout is um, this um, surprisingly, maybe not surprisingly young, but it is this um, young individual 
um, named uh, named Tannen, who is um, has only recently become the quartermaster um, after the previous quartermaster mysteriously disappeared. Um, and uh, there, there may be like 17 at, at oldest, and they're just kind of figuring things out. Um, and they were told to don't give anything out to anyone um, without the express permission of, um, you know, the higher ups. Um, but uh, you walked in and and basically explained to them that makes no sense whatsoever just give me the freaking poison and so um you walked away with um i'll say one one uh potion of poison resistance just by like totally overwhelming this poor child so there you go so you got that um canon is a bit tart personality so <laughs> i i've been telling people to do for a really long time <laughs> Uh, at and, the same time, I've collected now uh, 16 or 17 stones uh, to keep in a pouch because I'm going to keep track of how many of these Krampuses we take care of. So with 16, I figure we ought to cover a dozen. <laughs> Perfect. Um... <laughs> Seven intelligence, everybody. Seven intelligence. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, so, so Joseph's got his rocks. We've got uh, some, some potions of healing and uh, potion of poison resistance. Um, I should say, yeah, uh, before you folks uh, headed out or, or while you're on the road, um, any, any uh, questions that come to mind, anything else you would want to know about um, your task um, before you set out, anything that you would have asked? If not, do, okay. do Krampuses have any weaknesses do Krampus have any weaknesses that is an excellent question um I'm gonna say... i wouldn't have thought of asking that <laughs> <laughs> oh we know um make me i want to get you to make make me a nature check there Mariah. okay um... so yeah so uh, so uh, d20 um uh and then yeah, add your intelligence you a... bonus yeah your intelligence bonus or if you're proficient in nature you have a bonus for that but i don't think you are do you, do you see roll 20? I should. I do, do you see, see that 20. roll? I, I heard it. It made a noise. I rolled a natural 20. <laughs> you did. Holy crap, you did too. Using, using roll 20. Uh, so my nature is plus two, so it's 22. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the audience, I promised to roll a lot of natural 20s before <laughs> we started. And, and my first roll of the day is a natural 20 using a system that I could not have cheated right. or I don't have the knowledge of how to cheat with it so yeah and, yeah and you totally wouldn't have cheated before yeah the rest will be by die but <laughs> <laughs> proof that I'm not cheating the rest of the time that's proof sure you are sure you are. So okay 22. so 22 that's pretty good um so let's see here so weaknesses for a Krampus um da -da 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 -da, resistances I mean, you literally could not get better than that. No, that's true. I mean, well, someone could, but you couldn't. That is the best that you could possibly do. Um, I'm going to say, uh, as far as the Watchers of Alper and your own knowledge is concerned, um, you were paying a lot of attention in uh, the lessons on uh, Krampus weaknesses. Um, they don't actually have any natural weaknesses, unfortunately. Um, they are fiends. Um, and so they might be particularly susceptible to, um, you know, certain pa paladin abilities or certain uh, cleric spells from your friend Jotha. Um, the one thing that you, that you do know is that um, in this world, Krampuses, um, they, they wear um, a mask. Um, and it, it has a, a cultural significance. Um, and uh, like basically these war masks that they that they don before they go out um, hunting or before they go and, and uh, ready themselves for a raid against a, a neighboring settlement. Um, each Krampus has a war mask that they wear um, that uh, is particularly important both to the individual and to just you know the Krampus culture in general. Um, sort of represents their strength and their their honor. Um, if they lose their mask for any reason. Um, if it's you know knocked from them in battle or if it's lost through other means, um, that can have a very serious effect on them psychologically, which would therefore make them less dangerous. Um, so that's the closest thing you know of that that would be a, a weakness. It would be to basically target the mask if you can. I'll share my findings with the class. 
Um, anything anyone else would like to know? Is it possible if they drop their mask for us to wear them? You could, um, as far as you're aware, there's no there's no inherent magical property in in the mask. Um, uh, but if you were to, I care about fashion. I was going to say it would uh, the mask would look hella good. So if you find one that's got you know got, got a, a pattern on it that that matches um, what uh, what Sarasi likes, then it might might be in your best interest. Um, anything else? Dear adventurers. Do we know what kind of support we might have at the village? Is it something where we are completely, it's just us, or is there a local militia or anything along those lines that we might be able to use? Um, the watches of Alper are stretched pretty thin these days. Um, so you're probably on your own. Um, depending on, um, like if, if the, uh, the group of Krampuses that you're hunting, um, if they skirt close to, say, Dark Mist, which is kind of the southeast, um, or uh, one of the other settlements, you might be able to get help from them, but it's unlikely, especially how far you are from Dark Mist. Um, but uh, the sergeant who, who is accompanying you, uh, Sergeant Fissus, um, who is this, um, you know, kind of average height um, human male, um, like short, short, short uh, cut, uh, like jet black hair, um, what we would refer to as um, uh, Korean features. Um, and if, if, it, if, if it is at all relevant, um, I, I picture him as, uh, as Daniel Dae Kim from Lost. I can't do an impression of him, but that's the face. Um, Derek can attest from our home game that uh, my, uh, my ability to do voices in D&D is questionable at best. Um, it's limited to robots. It, I can do robots pretty well. Um, Maybe there's a, yeah, maybe we'll see a robot today that you won't. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, Sergeant Fissus, um, who is accompanying you, um, he has this very like perpetually cheery demeanor. Um, and he has said many times um, in the past few days as you've been uh, crossing the mountains um, that he has absolute faith in your abilities um, to handle any and all Krampuses that you come about. And he's prepared to just kind of stand back and watch and let you folks um, hack it out. And he thinks you're going to be fine. And he has said this like, many times each day. Sorry, what's the point of him again? <laughs> um, as you say this, he, he, he turns to you and as you're kind of walking through the mountains and says, well, I'm, I'm here to, uh, you know, provide moral support. Um, I'm here to uh, guide you. Um, and uh, I'm here to report back to the general and, and tell him how amazing and incredible and talented you folks are. Um, but if things, you know, if things go sideways, if, if um, you know, you find yourselves uh, in a little bit more trouble than you expect. I am prepared to step in and he pats um, this rather elegant looking longsword um, that uh, he has strapped to his hip. Um, the, between the, the, the scabbard and, and the hilt of the blade um, looks like it's pretty well maintained um, and uh, also that it's, it's seen a fair bit of use. And so you can see this kind of like, you know, kind of proud, like, yeah, don't worry, I got your back sort of smile. And Drynan just laughs and walks away. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, so as you folks are, are making your way um, uh, across the Crystal Mounts, um, there's one other thing that, that we need to decide, um, which uh, is relevant for uh, the setting of Nightfell, which is what the lunar phase is right now. Um, in this setting, um, because the, partly because the only light comes from the moon, um, the, uh, the lunar phases are pretty important to um, everyone in uh, Yerman. Um, and there are four phases um, that can be active. Um, the, there's the new moon, uh, there is the um, ascending moon, uh, there is the descending moon, um, or there is the full moon. Um, and for each of you uh, uh, prior to the game, I had asked you to pick your birth moon, which all of you did. Um, and uh, if your birth moon is, um, you know, is the active phase, if you're, you know, the, um, your birth moon is kind of present in the sky, so to speak, um, it, it carries uh, sort of like a subtle bonus to your character, which is kind of up to the DM's discretion. Um, so I know, I think several of you are, uh, your birth moon is uh, the new moon. Uh, I don't think that's everybody. Um, so uh, it is up to the four of you to decide what, what you want the lunar phase to be uh, right now. I like having this kind of cosmological power. 
Yeah, it's a cool uh, little thing. It's particularly I like vote it. for new moon. I'm also a new moon, so but I would leave that to our cleric or rogue who are more tied to such things. I'm trying to remember what I am. I think you're new moon, Susan. Okay, so let's go with that. So by an exercise of will, we change the face of the moon <laughs> before we leave. Yeah, you are gods among people. Um, yeah, so yeah, we should have done that before we started like dropping the narrative. That was the, I missed my note here, but yeah. So okay, so everyone's cool with it being a uh, new moon right now. Okay, um, I think yeah. So uh, so that is um, for everybody except Arlie. Um, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> we'll get a we'll get you know just a solo bonus. I'll uh, I'll let you know if it comes into play. Uh, but it is currently new moon. So the the as you folks are descending um, on uh, kind of the northern edge of the Crystal Mount, um, you can see the the new moon overhead. You know, it's rather bright. Um, the sky is remarkably clear. Uh, it's not always clear skies in Yermin. Um, it tends to be cloudy and gray more often than not. Um, but uh, for whatever reason, um, the, the moon has chosen to uh, be visible to you, uh, possibly to uh, you know, bless you and uh, give you a little bit more confidence as you are uh, making your way. Um, can I get everybody to make me a survival check? So survival check would be uh, your 20 sided die. Um, and then if you get a, uh, if you have a bonus for survival under your skills, um, add that. If you don't have a bonus for survival, you just add your bonus for wisdom. I rolled a 17 and my survival's three. So my total is 20. Is it? Yeah, my <laughs> role is, my role is in uh, roll oh, is that, was it? Oh, okay. So oh yeah, see, okay. You can see All it right. there. Okay, hey, or at least not lying, okay. Well, my my traditional luck has started manifesting. I rolled a four, and I have no bonuses. Okay, noted a four, Derek. Twenty three, including my bonus. Ah, oh, damn, not bad. Uh, Susan, I rolled an eighteen, 18. plus okay. three, so okay. twenty one. Yeah, not bad. All right, okay. So, uh, so between um, the three of you, um, other than Andrinan, sorry, um, you are um, as you're making your way um, down slope from the top of the um, the crystal mounts. You start to notice. You pick up signs of the passage of several uh, larger creatures, um, and it's actually um, uh, Jotha who notices first. Um, a couple of heavy footprints in, in the, the packed snow, um, which are you know, larger than most humanoids, um, definitely clawed feet, um, which you know, hints that you know, there, there's something big that's been moving through, uh, through this part of the mountains. Um, and then Sarasi, you notice um, that there's kind of this sporadic trees um, that uh, start to get a little bit denser as you get uh, close to the bottom of the mountain range. Um, and, uh, you know, just kind of scratch marks on the bark as though something big has passed by and just rubbed against uh, the tree enough to dislodge some of the bark. Um, and then finally, uh, Bariah, you see um, buried under the snow, um, but just a little bit of it uh, poking out uh, what appears to be uh, the broken half of uh, a spear, um, and, uh, or what you think is a spear, and you, you carefully pull it up out of the snow and you realize that it's actually just a, a sharpened uh piece of branch um and it's got even got like like or, or uh the limb of a tree and it's got you know like twigs and, and branches and stuff on the end of it and um you know from your intense studies into krampus that um they will often just carry around like broken bits of tree and swing those around as weapons um and so the fact that this one has been discarded here says that you folks are getting close i say we're getting close <laughs> I make sure that I have the right number of rocks in my pack. <laughs> I'm gonna take out my great sword. Shh. I apparently have no idea what's going on, but since everyone else is drawing their weapons, decide I probably should as well. Can I rub poison all over the trees? You totally can. <laughs> you absolutely can. Um, describe that for me. <laughs> I'm going to take poison and I'm going to rub it on the trees. Okay, love it. Um, yep, yeah, so while, 
while the others are drawing their weapons. Um, so as you go around and, and start, you know, um, I, don't, I, I don't know if you're like delicately applying it or just kind of like smearing point, just smearing. No, it's like this. <laughs> All over the trees. Can, can Jotha yeah. talk to, it's Sarasi? Yeah, please. Uh, Sarasi, um, those trees, they, um, they're, they're struggling you know, whatever you're rubbing on them, that's probably something they, they need those, you know, to live. The Krampus touched them. <laughs> but we still need trees. I'm not killing every tree in the world. It's just these, these ones that they use. So I feel we need the trees. Um, I don't know. <laughs> okay, how about I do three trees? Can they be small trees? <laughs> <sighs> okay, fine. <laughs> small trees, three. Yeah, so you find three, um, uh, you know, relatively small trees, uh, saplings, if you will, um, and uh, proceed to smear them in poison that may or may not kill them and prevent them from ever growing to maturity. Um, <laughs> as you make your way, um, so, so weapons drawn, proceeding a little more carefully. Um, who would notice this first? Um, I'm going to say, uh, Joe, so you notice this first. Um, just because of your slightly higher uh, perception. Um, but as you're coming down um, from the Crystal Mounts um, and uh, you know, kind of descending into the valley uh, north of the mountains, um, you see in the distance um, what you think at first is, is just flicker, well, it's flickering light. And then you, you peer a little closer and, and you, know, you, you try to make out exactly what it is in the distance and you realize that it's not just light, it is flames uh, flickering um ahead of where you folks are right now um everyone make me a perception check so um for this one uh d20 uh for the skill check um and then you add your perception bonus if you have one if not um you just add your wisdom i didn't wind up for it so i only rolled a seven but i have a plus six bonus so that's a 13. okay not bad Mine's a twenty-one total. God damn! I, my roll is in my roll is in roll twenty again. <laughs> I, I'm having questions about Arlie's rolls here. They're in roll twenty. Right you can there. see can... them. <laughs> you can see them. I'm I know sure where all I'll... my bad luck comes from. Now you've taken all the good luck. I'm sure my rolls will tank once they're actually important <laughs> and like we're in combat, Possibly. and all of a sudden I'll be hitting those ones and twos. But that's when we can use that new room. 13 plus 5. Okay, that's so 18. 18. Okay, and then, uh, James, did I get yours? Uh, 15. Okay. Um, I mean, that's not bad. That's all pretty good. Um, yeah, so, Mine was um, awesome. Yours was phenomenal. And so you noticed this first, Arlie. I'll give you this. Don't bat those eyes at me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so Brian, you noticed this first, um, which is the, yeah, the, the light in the distance is definitely flames and it's not just any old flames. Um, you make out, um, distant shapes that appear to be buildings. There is a settlement, um, a little bit ahead of you that is currently at least partially on fire. Um, and yeah, as you know, as you point this out to the, the rest of the group, um, all of you hear the distant sound of screaming. Uh, first one, then another, um, you know, screams mostly of fear, um, but then you catch at least one uh, very obvious scream of pain, and it is followed immediately by this distant, dull roar um, of something um, enraged um, and uh, possibly hungry. How far away? Um, probably about, if you really hoof it, about 20 minutes. if you'd like to make your way that way. I uh, tell everybody that looks like it's about 10 minutes away if we hurry. <laughs> 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 sure. 
Shall we go? I I have doubts about the veracity of your claims, but I will also go that direction. Yeah. All right, Sarasi, you following along? Yeah, I'll just hang out at the back of the the group, though. I'll I'll, I'll follow okay. quietly. Is it is anyone more of a meat shield than me? Uh, I am pretty I am pretty good at uh, taking damage. Um, although I suppose that uh, Jane might too. I don't know. I got chainmail armor, is what I'm saying. I, I I'm good at taking damage. My dice are better at dealing damage to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's I have your... a crossbow. I want to take out my crossbow. What's I won't your... shoot any of you. <laughs> What's your class, Jim? Oh, well, I, I'm a, a fighter, but that's not going to do any good for me. I'm technically a medium. Oh, uh, okay. Should I take point? Is my question. Oh, the paladin uh... should probably take point. Okay. I'm taking now... point. <clears throat> Okay, Brian. The, the thing is, Brandon is an expert at getting the party to do things that are not good for it. Like, Don't so how secrets. do you guys want to divide up to, you know, explore the library is a classic Brandonism. So the the thing library is, was saying, like three years ago. <laughs> I'm just saying that Brandon right now saying, if you guys hurry, you can make it in 20 minutes. I'm wondering if Brandon is leading us into an ambush or making us go later, like, oh, if you move that fast, your perception is lower. So you get surprised easier. I'm just pointing I out, see. you got to play the man, not the cards. So in, a, in the words of Admiral Akbar, it's a trap. I don't know. Okay, that but... innocent face that you just tried to make definitely tells me it's a trap. That was way too not innocent. Well, my thing is, why are we running? We don't need to run. We're, we're going... Um, well, it's 20 minutes away, so we might not be running, but we're probably marching, you know. I don't know if we're running per se, but heading in that direction. Well, if we go half speed, we can make it in 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well I actually put, do both for half speed. <laughs> It is wiser to keep an eye out for things. Okay. So you're proceeding carefully then? Uh, as fast as we can go while being able to, you know, perceive the world around us. Okay, noted. <laughs> All right. Um, and just so I'm clear, uh, Barai, you're still taking point and Sarasi, you're, you're hanging back. Yeah, I think I'm probably the meat shield, so I'll take point, but I'm also on on high alert for like ambushes, traps, uh, Krampuses, jumping out, okay. that kind of thing. Okay. I uh, don't me... trust any of it, least of all you. <laughs> <laughs> so Fine. I see Brandon. Because I've never played this character before, one mm -hmm. of the things or this this class before, one of the things that I do before combat is essentially ready the ghost, mm -hmm. um, ghost in ambush. So I should go ahead and do that now before we're in combat and I'm trying to do a ritual while I'm being hit. Yeah, sounds good. So I don't think there's a check I need to make to do that, I but I just want to know that I'm doing so. that. Yeah, and I think I, I can't remember if. I don't know if it's that, like because it's a ritual if you're supposed to stop and do it. I'm okay with you doing it on the move. I didn't um, see any, when I was looking at it, I didn't see anything about that, okay. so. Perfect, yeah, okay, so we'll say yeah, you, you can do that on the move. Um, and I should say too that because, you know, A, we're playing in a new setting and, and we're coming at this with uh, varying expertise with D&D, with &D, um, if there's something that logically you would have done like before the fight and it occurs to you like just as we get started, just let me know. I'm, I, despite what Derek says, I will be fairly generous today. <laughs> Did you see how he put the word today in there? Oh, I noticed that. <laughs> I was very you, aware you, of that. You try to offer something and uh, get no respect. Um, Baraya, since you're taking point, you said you were specifically keeping watch. Uh, make me a, another perception check, if you don't mind. But my last one was so good. I know. <laughs> I want to see if your luck holds. 
Nope. Oh, no. <laughs> For people who can't see that, I rolled a three, and my perception is three, so that is a total of less than Jotha's intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> yep. A little We're bit. Damned. Yeah, you're doomed. Yeah. I and don't I have that. to be the only one keeping an eye out. That's true, except that, that, that is fair. Although you're the only one who said that you were. So um, <laughs> I will point out though that um, uh, Greg has uh, actually put the uh, the Roll20 thing on uh, the stream so people can see your rolls early. Um, oh, great. <laughs> thanks, Greg. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so with that uh, amazing perception roll, um, as you folks are approaching the village uh, or, or the settlement, rather, you can see uh, what appears to be a um, rather small uh, village. And, and across eastern Alper, most of the settlements tend to be pretty small, um, partly because of you know the lack of resources and partly because of you know the fact there are monsters kind of everywhere. Um, people have tended towards clustering together pretty tightly for for mutual protection. And um, so what you see ahead of you are um, these kind of round dome like um, huts made of uh, what appears to be dark wood, um, and they're clumped together in the in these tight batches. And even from afar, uh, partly because of the light from you know the flames that are uh, you know burning up on several of these buildings. Um, you can see that uh, there's this long wide street that appears to cut through um, the center of the settlement. Um, you can see what appears to be, at least from, from your side um, of, uh, of the village, some narrower streets um, between some of these batches of huts. Um, and uh, a lot of it is, is um, heavily snow covered, um, you know, as much of Eastern Alper tends to be. Um, and uh, yeah, as you're approaching, you don't see any obvious defenses. Um, you know, there's no there's no wall surrounding the settlement. There's no lookout posts, um, and uh, you also don't immediately see any movement around the outside of the village um, as you folks are approaching. And, and as you get closer, um, you know the flames are still crackling, obviously in the distance. Um, you don't hear any more screams, um, and you don't hear any more roaring. It's gotten pretty quiet in the you know, 20 minutes or 10 by Joe's account um, that uh, you've been approaching the uh, the village. Um, so what would you like to do? If there are wounded in there, I could go in and help. But it would be interesting if we took advantage of our different skills and maybe our thief assassin could stealthily go around and and scout while the rest of us draw them in or something. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Um, How far away are we from the huts? Um, I would, I mean, it's kind of up to you folks, but you can be um, as close as you want. Let's say right now you're like, you're like 100 feet away, give or take. Um, but you, you can get closer, you can move further back. It's up to you folks. Okay, I think um, when we get 60 feet away, I can use divine sense. Mm -hmm. And since these are fiends, um, I'll be able to tell if they're nearby and where they are and that kind of stuff, with, even if we can't see them. Divine also, sense here, will let me know. Apparently I have resistance to fire damage, so I can just... You could. Um, okay, so who, uh, so sorry, um, Sarasi, you're gonna approach on your own or is everybody gonna, gonna approach? I'll leave it up to them, I guess. Is I there, say... oh, go ahead. No, you go. Uh, we're coming through a fairly rocky area, right? Is there a way that we can look at triggering some sort of distraction, whether that's sending boulders rolling, starting, setting some trees alight, Sorry, I know more tree damage. Apparently that's the theme of this game. Um, but basically some way that we can start trying to draw the Krampus force away from the village. Well, that's a good idea. Um, make me a survival check. So yeah, that's so uh, well. totally fine. Well, I got an 11 with no, can I use intimidation? <laughs> <laughs> or athletics? 
Uh, as much as I said I was going to be generous. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, so I tried to intimidate them. <laughs> 11. Um, I would say with an 11, um, as, so um, as much as this is kind of rocky terrain, um, it's leveled out fairly gradually. So you don't see anything that um, you could use to create like a landslide or boulders or anything. Um, and the tree cover has gotten pretty sparse. Um, you could like you could maybe light a single tree on fire, um, but you don't see anything else that that would um, uh, that immediately triggers you. Like like you know, goes, oh, that's a great idea. You know, I could do that. Not a whole lot um, that you see that you can use. Unfortunately, Jotha says I could go into the middle of the village and I will draw out the enemy. And then when they're there, I will run and you guys attack. <laughs> but if there aren't any enemy around, what I can do is I can see about the wounded who may be right even now bleeding out and dying of burns. And this will also save the trees that you're planning to destroy to draw out the enemy. I say, let's get closer. <clears throat> I'll use divine sense. If I don't sense anything, we can send uh, Susan to scout. The other thing that we could do is like, we could hide and then create noise. Jame was saying something similar. We could just shout and create noise and half of the party hide and then see if the, if the Krampus, the Krampi come and then half the party can ambush them. And I can be like a stand out in the open kind of person to draw them out and shout and be like, hey, I'm here. Two ideas. Okay, so I also have this burglar kit thing, right? And it has 1,000 ball bearings, right? So what if I like sneak in and then throw the ball bearings behind me and then you guys call, the, I'll go sneak around and then you guys call them out. And then when they come out, maybe they'll trip on those ball bearings. So they can't even get you. I'm not against the ball bearing plan. A thousand does seem like an awful lot of anything. But if we're, it sounds to me like we said, first thing we could use the divine sense and I'm all about using gods. Then with that information, we could decide about what we want to do next. And I could get closer to the wounded before all the ball bearings are on the ground. I'm done with anything. Cool. Okay. So it sounds like we are going to move within 60 feet. Yeah. Uh, Baraya is going to use his divine sense. I'm going yeah. to be standing right behind him impatiently. Yeah, right. we'll move within 50 feet because the range is 60 feet. That way it'll go, it'll dip into the area a bit more. But it'll also, it's like this, you know. Okay, so it's, uh, it's like so, like sonar. Beep they beep. call that around directional. It's like gaydar, but for evil. <laughs> For evil gays. For evil Please. specifically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let, let, let me let me check my notes on on each individual Krampus and what they're into. <laughs> All of, do any of them have a, a profile? And that's fine. Um, so uh, so just to declare it, so it's sixty feet in any direction away from you. Correct. Um, <clears throat> yep. Okay. And so uh, I can do this six times per long rest. So this nice. counts for one time. Okay, perfect. Um, so it especially is effective with celestials, fiends, and undead. So since they're awesome. fiends, this is a great tool. Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. Um, and just for, for reasons, um, from what direction do you want to approach the village? Because I've mentioned that, you know, there's these tight clusters of huts. There's this, what appears to be this one main avenue cutting through town. Um, do you want to approach like towards the start of the main avenue? Do you want to approach a different direction? Where would you like to just so I kind of know what direction your divine sense is going? Uh, we could come like just to the left, we could like creep up just to the left of the main avenue so that we're not 
completely out in the open, but we can see we have good visibility and stuff. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so you do that, so you get to about, you know, what you think is about 50 feet um, from the first uh, couple of huts um, in this village. Um, and you, know, you concentrate, you cast out your divine sense um, and 60 feet directly ahead of you, um, just on the other side of those, um, those uh, first couple of huts, there's a momentary ping, um, kind of like boom, um, just for a moment, and then it disappears. Um, and you're, what was that sound effect again? Pong. <laughs> Master of sound effects, hire me to do your parts. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah so, and, then it, and then it just moves outside the divine sense, probably because it moved just outside the range, but you, so you picked up one for sure. I share my findings with the group. Do we see any wounded at this point? There is evil. Uh, do, we we check wounded? Uh, do me a perception check. Uh, perception check. Uh, the uh, Twitch 11 chat plus is enjoying six. It. Sorry. 11 plus 6. 11 plus 6. Um, you do not see any wounded. Um, I will say with that high of a perception score, yeah, you don't see any wounded. You do hear um, from somewhere in the village, you can hear um, kind of like low guttural voices kind of like growling at each other. You can just pick it up. Um, growling? Yeah, or I mean, you can't make up the words, so it sounds like growling to you. Um, and uh, yeah, but you don't, you don't see any wounded. You don't see anybody um, in the immediate vicinity. Okay. So, what about if instead of going directly towards your ping, we go, we loop around and, and see if we can sneak up on something from the side and then also check out those voices? Yep. Okay. So is that to the left, Brandon, we would go? Uh, yeah, you're approaching from the left. So if you, want to, if you want to avoid the main avenue, then you would continue to the left. Okay. So let's try that. And uh, I would suggest that we all try and be sneaky like stealthy. See, Derek knows my playbook. Um, so yeah. if, if any of you, uh, or I'll say all of you, um, if you could roll me a stealth check, if you would like to be stealthy. Um, so that is a, a D20 plus your stealth bonus, which I know Sarasi has a phenomenal stealth bonus. Uh, 18 for me. Okay, noted. I got a natural 19 plus. Sorry, natural 19 plus what, Derek? Uh, zero. 19 for Derek. <laughs> I rolled a four. Oh, no. Plus eight. Okay, All right, that's not bad. Uh, four, I, I can do that math, that's 12. Okay, and then, oh, Harley with the natural 19. Plus three. Okay, that's 22. So ironically- um, How was every everyone more stealthy than me? <laughs> Just you're like of us poison trees you're like not in the mood <laughs> you're like i don't feel stealth right now <laughs> too focused on getting one of those fashionable masks <laughs> <laughs> you're like people need to see my outfit <laughs> <laughs> just step why, right why am there. i hiding <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Um, so uh, with that stealth check, so you're moving um, away from the main avenue towards the, uh, like along kind of the left edge of the village. Um, as you kind of make your way, I mentioned there are some narrower uh, paths. So you spot a couple of um, very narrow, I don't know, you're not sure if they're like intended to be streets or there's kind of narrow gaps between uh, some of the huts um, that you could theoretically use to advance further into the village if you wanted to. Um, yeah, so I, I, you can continue moving and let me know what you want to do. Sounds good to me. Yeah, oh. advance into the village sounds good to me using oh. the huts. But sorry, so we got to this new point where we where there's another lane and have we heard anything else subsequently or is the sound l louder or is it quieter or did anything change regarding that? That's a good question. Um, I will say, I'll, I'll stick with Jotha with your perception check from before. 
Um, and even just with your, your folks, your passive perception, you can pick up some of this too. Um, so the, the kind of low, um, kind of growly sort of voices that, um, that you can, uh, you picked up before, Joe, the, um, they're definitely, as you um, step down one of these narrow gaps between the huts, definitely getting louder. Um, and you can hear several distinct voices talking to each other. Um, you can also hear this, how do I describe this? This kind of like wet slapping sound. Um, I, what would it be akin to? Let's, let's say almost like, almost like the sound of like a butcher in a butcher shop tossing stuff onto a counter. <laughs> <laughs> reminds you of the mess hall a little bit um, i uh i whisper what i think i hear to my colleagues i don't think this is voices of people who are like that we should be trying to rescue it might be past that point But we should stop them from defacing bodies. That's just nasty. <laughs> I mean, personally, I'd prefer to save the bodies that are still alive and get back to you know preserving the dead ones later. But that's yeah, I let the, they're gone. Unless we can poison the the bodies, but like you know, I mean, I know you're the cleric and you care about that, but like <laughs> they're dead. I mean, we if could... they're if they're turning the bodies into cold cuts and they're poisoned, that might not be a bad idea. Can you let me poison bodies? <laughs> Couldn't you just poison the enemy directly? Well, I have to go up to them and put rub poison on them like the trees. Just constant rubbing of poisons. Um, as you <laughs> folks are having this debate, is uh, I'm assuming you're continuing further into the, <laughs> the village. Um, so I'm not perfect. So as you're you continuing on and you're having this debate, um, at the back of your group, uh, Sergeant Fissus, who was sort of just letting you kind of lead this um, along uh, for the most part, um, hisses um, almost too loudly. Um, don't worry, however, just rub as much poison as you want, stab as many things as you want. It, it, I'm, you know, maybe we'll get lucky and there's people still alive in there. You guys got this. <laughs> and the big reveal is he's working for the enemy the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he brings them food. Here <laughs> <laughs> we go. Uh, <laughs> so, his face. so Andrinan is has a high stealth. I'm going to regret saying this. Uh, has a relatively high stealth. So in this case, I think it might actually be worth having a little bit of split with the party and oh, seeing yes, if please. we can flank them. <laughs> by split, I mean by like five feet, <laughs> just to be clear. Okay. We are not going to different ends of the village. I am not that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Um, uh, that... But anyways, if someone can kind of like barrel in at the front and then maybe a couple of us can go in and try and come in behind i don't know what type of of houses they are, are they like single door or what what sort of construction um, they mostly have? appear to be single door um like and, and as now that you're walking um kind of alongside them um the they appear to be um all made of weathered uh like this kind of weathered dark wood um and the the material the like the boards that have been used to put these um, huts together look looks like old wood, um, but the buildings themselves look relatively new. If that makes sense, there's not a, like in terms of how they're they're um, they've been nailed together and whatnot. Like all of like kind of the fascinating like reclaimed wood sort of basically. Yeah, it's kind of like reclaimed okay. wood. So the said one's probably relatively new, um, but uh, yeah, but it's the, the kind of single room huts. All the um, any of the windows that you pass are have been tightly shuttered, probably against the cold. Um, but, uh, and you know, they're, they're all single story as well. Um, if that's relevant, um, and, uh, yeah, well, yeah, mostly round a couple of rectangular sort of shapes, but yeah, all one story kind of small huts. Uh, I uh, say that, uh, Baraya and I can go straight forward and then the other half of the party could do, you know, two sides of a pincer movement. 
What do you think, Pariah? There, there are no chimneys, right? Uh, you spot a couple of chimneys. Are they big enough to go down with rope? Um, make a perception check. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, d20, and then um, your, uh, whatever your perception bonus is, if you have one. If not, it's your wisdom bonus. Seventeen. Seventeen. Wow. Uh, not bad. Um, you take a quick look. Um, in your immediate vicinity, um, you don't see um, any chimneys big enough to um, big enough to jump down. But looking ahead, um, so there's a um, a kind of larger rectangular building directly ahead of you at the end of this kind of narrow passage. Um, and based on um, what you saw as you were approaching the the village, you're pretty sure that that um, that building is probably like the, the kind of wide avenue through the center of the village is probably just on the other side of that. Um, but that, you know, kind of larger rectangular building, you can see this uh, kind of curling smoke coming out of the center, uh, or the center of the roof rather. Um, and you get the sense that it's not a chimney per se, but that there's a, a kind of larger opening there probably for a wood stove or something to kind of get the smoke out of the, the building. Um, so it would theoretically be big enough for you to drop into but you'd have to get up on the roof. Well, and there's smoke in it, so there's fire there. I mean, very little smoke. Mm hmm All right, so what are we doing? All right, is I'm anyone- I'm down up? with- the... Go ahead. You go. No, no, I think you're, you're about to be far more useful than I am. <laughs> I'm down with the advancing pincher like. Yeah, I'm good with that. Pincher maneuver. Pincher maneuver. Okay, so that was uh, Baraya and Jotha kind of moving down this laneway. And yeah. then, okay. And then uh, Susan and James sneakily sneaking. Axtabi. Do, 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 splitting off, but not too far. Not separating the party far. We are okay. still one party. We're still one party, but splitting off to like flank, surround, etc., etc. Okay, perfect. Um, and uh, uh, Jane and Susan, are you uh, splitting off together or in two opposite directions? Opposite. Okay. Uh, preference uh, left and right. I, I'll take the left. Okay, so James is taking the left and Susan is taking the right. Okay, perfect. All right, cool. Uh, so here is what you folks see. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on um, Baraya and, and Jotha as you're continuing down the, the, we'll say the center lane, so to speak. Um, as you're approaching that kind of larger rectangular building with the, um, the smoke that I described to Susan, um, again, those, those sounds of kind of guttural voices and that very obvious sound of wet meat, that sounded horrible, um, is, uh, it continues to get louder. Um, and as you very carefully step around this uh, building, um, Baraya, you see immediately, uh, about 30 feet ahead of you, this huge hulking humanoid form. Uh, you have never seen a Krampus up close and personal. Um, you've only heard about them. Um, but they are uh, large creatures um, in every sense of the word. Um, this particular uh, Krampus is probably got like a, a f like a foot taller than you, if not more. Um, these like wide, burly shoulders, um, covered in um, uh, dark furs, um, and you can see like bits of armor underneath. Um, massive clawed hands, uh, hoofs for feet. Um, and a face that is basically like all sharp edges and pointiness um, and large serrated irregular teeth. Um, and in the case of this particular Krampus, these two curling horns um, jutting out from the top of its head. Um, and it is not looking at you. It, it's uh, um, you're basically approaching from its left side. 
um, as it leans down, scoops at something. You can't quite see what it's grabbing at um, until its claw um, comes back, holding what appears to be um, a severed leg, um, which it immediately starts munching on uh, with wild abandon. It looks like it's having a blast. Um, and uh, so, so that's the first thing that you see. Um, let me see here. Uh, and Drynan, as you're kind of curving around uh, from the left on this other laneway, um, you can hear that. Um, and the way that your path goes, um, you have to, you know, you curve around that larger wooden building, um, and then you kind of split maybe a little further to the left than you wanted, um, just the way that this kind of laneway works. Um, and then as you're curving around a second building, um, you see up ahead this wide avenue um, through the center of town. Um, and I'd say thing about 30 feet ahead of you, uh, two Krampuses, neither of which is looking in your direction. They don't, they don't appear to have noticed you yet. Um, and they are, uh, you know, just kind of standing shoulder to shoulder, um, again, looking away from you, um, you know, apparently on watch. And it just so happens that they're, you know, you got lucky they're they're looking in the wrong direction. Um, and then Sarasi, uh, as you're curving around from the right, um, you end up having to go a little further south. Um, again, not by much, we're talking like, you know, 20 feet or so, um, curve around another building. Um, and as, as you step onto that, um, that wide central avenue, you don't see anything right away. Okay, that's kind of weird. Um, and you can still hear the sounds off to your left. Um, and as you step forward, you just peer around that building, um, you know, to your left down that central avenue, you can see, uh, how far away is that? Uh, it's about 40 feet away from you to your left, um, two Krampuses. Um, same thing, keeping watch. Um, and they are in fact staring directly in your direction. Um, and with your previous stealth score, yours was the lowest. Uh, one of them is kind of like, you know, scratching at its, its hideous face. It's not paying any attention. Um, but the one beside it, um, as you see these two Krampuses and, and you know, you presumably about to kind of duck out of their sight, it's two yellow eyes fixate directly on you. It knows you're there. And since, you know, it's about 4.30, I think that's a good place to pause. <laughs> and I, I should have warned Greg, I totally forgot, but um, this kind of snuck up on me. So uh, Greg, if it is possible for us to pause there for a short bio break, this seems like an appropriate spot. Okay. Um, yes, fortunately, I, I was, you know, completely entranced by the Krampus. Um, <laughs> Perfect. So, uh, yeah, I'm ready to take a break whenever you are. Cool. Yeah, we'll do like a five-minute break, if that's cool with everybody. Lovely. Sounds good. Yeah, so hydrate. We'll be right back.
Okay, here we are. Welcome back, everybody. And I'm going to uh, transition us over. Uh, just a quick note, by the way, uh, before I hand things back over, that we are currently sitting at uh, $55 so far that have been donated for the Reach Out Response Network. Um, and uh, I've been putting links, there are links to this in chat, exclamation point, Reach Out will help you for that. If you want to donate to this worthy charity, and actually, I don't know, Brendan, if you talked about it, but you might, you could mention it if you want um, now about what the charity actually is. If you want to donate, you can do so here and just announce it in chat, or you can let me know via a DM if you want to be kept anonymous, and I will just update the total and thank you anonymously. So, um, but back over to you, Brennan. And yeah, so uh, Bank of Giving, uh, we don't just gather and play games and have fun and, and uh, be silly, um, even in a horror setting like this. Uh, but we're also doing this um, to support um, a bunch of charities and, and hopefully put some good out into the world. Um, so on our website, we have a, a, a growing list of charities that uh, we're trying to spotlight in areas like health justice and housing justice and ind indigenous rights and so forth. Um, and the charity that we've chosen to spotlight this month um, is uh, the Reach Out Response Network, which is based in Toronto. Um, they're a relatively new organization. Um, uh, they came about in uh, 2020, uh, which is when I first became aware of them. Um, and they've been kind of leading uh, a push for um, civilian-led uh, mental health crisis response teams in Toronto um, as an alternative to um, you know, police response uh, for mental health uh, crises. Um, and they've been, they've been doing a ton of good work. Um, Toronto City Council unanimously voted um, uh, just last year um, to basically, you know, uh, start creating these um, crisis response teams um, in order to improve that service um, in Toronto, which I know a number of cities in the United States and across Canada are doing as well. Um, so they're doing really, really good work. Uh, they're, they're a really important uh, charity. Um, and so if you are able to um, donate to them, it would be much appreciated. Um, and uh, like uh, Greg said, you can find um, a link to them in the chat. Um, and uh, we're giving away multiple things this month um, for folks who donate. Um, one of them is a story critique from our very own Susan Palumbo, who is here with us on the stream. Um, so if you are a writer, um, I think particularly of dark fantasy and horror, but I think anything speculative, uh, Susan is willing to take a look at, um, uh, up to 6,000 words uh, for a story critique. Um, one lucky winner will uh, will win that. Um, so that is one of the prizes that is up uh, for this giveaway. Um, we're also giving away uh, two full sets um, of the PDFs for Nightfell, which was generously donated to us uh, from Mana Project Studio. Um, it was so huge thanks to them for offering this. Um, the full set of the PDFs includes uh, the source book. It includes uh, the bestiary, which has stats on things like Krampuses and stuff. Um, it includes the adventure book, which uh, is where I'm pulling today's adventure from. There's a soundtrack. There's map tokens for Roll20. There, there's, all, there's a whole slew of stuff um, that uh, they're giving away for free. And we've got two sets of these um, that we're giving away this month. Um, and so you can enter for that as well. And uh, I don't know, Greg, if, if you want to update the total, but prior to the stream, uh, we were already starting to get donations in. Um, so if you include um, the emails that we've gotten over the past few days, uh, let me do some quick math here. We've got uh, it's 120 sets, so 180. To, um, do you want Jotha to do the math? <laughs> <laughs> Using the sure. stones. <laughs> Use, yeah, so in terms of stones. Um, no, but in, uh, in terms of the emails um, that uh, we've gotten to the Bank of Giving account, we've raised $250 um, wow. just in the past few days uh, for uh, most of the reach out, yeah, for the reach out response network. Uh, so um, that's 250 on top of what's already in the stream today. Um, so it's like a huge shout out to everybody who has donated. That is phenomenal. Um, and we really appreciate it. Susan is a really good writer. So um... I don't say that lightly. I'm not the type of person to say that without actually believing it. I don't just say that about people randomly, um, but she's written a number of pieces that I have thought were really good. Um, so to get a crit from Susan probably is high value if you're a writer, um, you know, yeah, I'm picky. And this I'm saying makes me she's want to poison writer. people less. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> poison more people. That's Let's called, called that character growth. What we just witnessed was character growth. So, yes. Susan's poison story more the bride enemies, was fantastic. Not more friends. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, and the modules such as Nightfell tend to be pretty pricey. So even that as getting, I've taken a look at the books, not thoroughly, but I've glanced through and it's high quality work. Um, that kind of stuff is usually pretty pricey on its own. So, I mean, if you're a D&D fan, D&D player, that's a great thing to be able to get your hands on and to expand your your games, basically. So, And even if you don't win anything, it's still a good prize. Yeah. That's true. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Yeah, no, I 100% agree with all of that, uh, particularly the praise for Susan, because um, what? <laughs> Don't give us that look. Um, yeah, so yeah, so, no, so that, that's that's the giveaway. Um, again, uh, really appreciate it. Shall we fight some Krampuses? Yeah. Yes. All right, let's do it. So I mean, uh, let's do surprise we'll survive. round first. Let's hey, do we'll, surprise we'll round first. Uh, yeah, I don't okay, know so, if we'll survive. Just, just a reminder for the DM that we're yeah. third level. Oh, yeah third level yeah I, I, but okay. you've got the sergeant the sergeant is with you uh also daniel take him <laughs> he's got this. i'm gonna I'm, do, I'm gonna just hand him my phone number <laughs> just in case he has free time and you know <laughs> if we survive we might want to do some extracurricular bonding or yeah no, he, he, just, he pockets it and gives you a very uh daniel take him um I, I don't know eyebrow waggle or, i don't know what he uh, yeah <laughs> you know he's, too, says, he's too smooth he's, he's too smooth. smooth yeah nothing says faith in your party like remember you've got an npc to, you know in case things go wrong <laughs> work <laughs> yeah also don't forget i gave you two regular healing potions nothing but faith in how you folks are going to do this uh-huh. yeah it takes a round to drink those oh yeah it does doesn't it yeah, yeah they're <laughs> useless can't you that's drink true. it on the bonus good. round? Well, yeah, yeah, that's a house. That's um, in, in our home campaign uh, that Derek and I play. Uh, I house ruled it that you it's a bonus action to because okay. for the same reason because otherwise potions are a waste of time. So you know what? On the fly because we're having fun so here. It's a I'm bonus action. It. Bonus action. Bonus action to drink a so potion. Bonus. Not only am I useful healing as a cleric, I also get the rules changed to our advantage. That yeah. is super useful. <laughs> Um, Derek fights me on things all the time. So, um, it's okay. So, Derek, you wanted to cast a spell before combat, which I will allow because we're all friends. Okay. <laughs> I have never cast this before because I've never been a cleric before. Oh, geez. So, I'm going to try guiding, guiding Bolt on that uh, thing in front of us. And I guess it's a ranged attack. Oh, well, you want, you want, you want to attack this thing? That guiding bolt is an attack, but what it does is it makes it easy. If it hits, if it works, mm-hmm. it'll make it easier for the rest of us to hit it. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Um, I'm going to retcon myself. I'm going to say if you want to, if you want to attack, we're going to roll the initiative. Um, so because... what about my Derek... idea about the surprise round, Brandon? Derek yeah, no, wants you, to you, have you a surprise. Have a, you don't have an actual surprise round because Susan got spotted. If Susan hadn't gotten spotted, I would give you a surprise round. But but they've seen Susan. But they're they're not even us. looking at us. They're looking at Susan. She's drawing them away. <laughs> Do I have to bring it's up my fine. teacher I voice, Derek? The... <laughs> I rolled a 17 for initiative anyway. All right, okay, so. Fashion can the... be deadly. <laughs> I watch Project Runway. I can verify that. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, so. Would... Um, I got Derek's a 19. To... Okay, good. Okay, so yeah, let's roll initiative. So um, what you're going to do is, yeah, roll a d20. Um, add your initiative bonus at the top of your sheet. Oh, my gosh. This better be good, man. I rolled a one. Oh it's, no! It's good on the old school rules. This it's good for second edition rules. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, for fifth edition, it is bad. Um, it is bad. Yeah. yeah, I have a plus three, so that's a four. That's a four. All right. I rolled so. a ten. All right, hold on. Uh, so, so too many numbers thrown at me. So, um, Jamie, you have a nine. Yeah, I'm nine. basically oh. sitting there going, "Wait." Should we? Is something? Wait, but uh, wait busy before you the attack. At your number. <laughs> I love it. Sorry, sorry. So uh, it's Nate, true. Uh, <laughs> um, what are we supposed to add to it? Uh, so your initiative bonus, which is basically the same as your dexterity bonus. It should be at the top of your uh, character sheets, isn't it? Eighteen. Okay, so eighteen for Susan. Jane, what was yours? Twenty-one. 21 nice you guys are fast we aren't flirting with the sergeant 
Yeah. <laughs> I have priorities, man. Um, Derek, what was yours? Uh, 10. 10. Okay. Uh, 10 for the cleric, four for Arlie. And then I just have to roll for the Krampuses. So that was that. What is their initiative bonus? This is always the part where things slow down. I apologize to the audience. If you roll a three for them, that'd be really cool, Brandon. I think a lot of people would be impressed with you. Would they? I They're large, so they're probably slow. Uh, maybe. Like those, <laughs> like those things in Harry Potter that they stuck the wind up the nose. Those were pretty slow. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's that one. Um, I can I can let you know that I did not roll a three. Um, and then for the sergeant, oh, I rolled bad for the sergeant though. <laughs> the sergeant suddenly flustered by my passing him my number. He's like, oh, I, I didn't like, expect oh, no. this. Oh wow, what do I do? What do I do? Me yeah, play it cool, play it cool. <laughs> yeah, play it cool, play it cool, play it cool. <laughs> Uh, oh man, Derek, there's also get, the question of the were you chat, cool man. enough before? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Okay, let's do this. So, uh, top of the round um, with a 21 initiative um, is Andrinan. So, um, at this point, um, you know, nothing actively has happened yet. You don't necessarily know that, um, you don't even really know how many Krampuses are to the south of you. Um, but what would you like to do? And I can go over what you can do in a round if you want. So, I have Chill Touch, and I also with the medium skills i um, i have the ability as i'm i'm noticing i'm noting this now so that hopefully i can remember it when it happens as a response i can essentially throw my ghost at an enemy to keep them from generating hit points oh yes um, so just double checking they aren't immune to necrotic damage for any reason right uh, not as far as uh, Bariah's research suggested. Okay. Uh, so that is a response that I have, but I would like to go ahead and hit them with Spectral Claw. Okay. Uh, which I've never heard of what this that spell. Is. Hmm? So I've never heard of what that is. Uh, yeah, that spell. Uh, hold on. Let me double check. Which spell is it? Spectral Claw. Oh, I don't know that one well enough. Yeah, to I think that that's a nice it, so. it sounds cool. Uh, it holds it immobile, uh, doing damage to its target. There's probably a saving throw, though. There should be. Yes. Yeah. Trying to go through the. Okay. Sorry. So clarity, uh, it's called Spectral Claw. It also says you learn the Chill Touch cantrip. So I'm just going to go oh, okay. with Chill Touch. Okay. I just misread that. Um, it's Charisma. So that's good. All right. So it's a Charisma saving throw for him? I've no, it's Charisma casting. My, yeah, oh, sorry. My casting, yeah. it's Charisma. Yeah, but Chill Touch oh. requires you to touch him. Uh, I think it's got a range, though, doesn't it? Yeah, Chill Touch has a, yeah. I'm pretty sure it has a range. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it should be. So I roll a grand total of eight. Oh, um, yeah. So you, uh, you know, murmur the incantation under your breath. You send this blast of cold um, energy streaking toward that first Krampus, which I've, I've put a little yellow uh, signifier on. Um, and the, the cold just splashes into the snow at its feet. Um, unfortunately doing no damage and its head whips towards you. And so it knows you're there. Um, you have a, you still have your movement and you have a bonus action if you like. Uh, yes, I will move closer. Okay. That seems like a great idea with the rules that I have. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. Uh, do you want to move it? Do you want me to move it? I'm happy if you to want to move it just to... Sure. Uh, right up to it. Sure. It seems like a great idea. Perfect. Okay, so that's your turn. Um, next up in the initiative order is Sarasi. So Susan, um, you are down here, uh, marked with the S on the map. Mm -hmm. um, you uh, see these two Krampuses. Um, they, have, or one of them at least, has spotted you. Um, they're at a little bit of a distance. 
um, and it is your turn. So you, you've got your action, you've got your move action, you've got your bonus action. I can guide you in whatever respect would be easiest for you. Well, like, did it just see me or did it move? Or? It hasn't moved yet. You're, you're a little quicker than it is, so. I want to climb up the building. Okay. Like the one that's, okay, perfect. Uh, make me um, either an athletics check or an acrobatics check. So a D20 uh, plus your bonus for either or, whichever you Okay, have. we're doing acrobatics because athletics, I have zero. Okay. <laughs> ah, 15 plus eight is 23. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so you scuttle up the building. Um, and so you uh, plant yourself on the roof. Um, I'll say that uses uh, two. Um, what else would you like to do? Um, so I don't know if it's doing anything because I have this thing where I can attack things before they attack me. Oh, yes, you can. So yeah, so you can, you can basically make your attack. Um, and you get a bonus if it hasn't done anything, which in this case you would. Right. So I have this crossbow, so I want to shoot the one that saw me. Perfect. So that's this guy here. Um, I'm going to mark him with a pink one. Um, so if you can, uh, yeah, roll a d20. And then add the bonus for your crossbow, which uh, I don't have in front of me, but I can pull up if that would help. It would be dexterity plus proficiency. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> dexterity is six. Okay. <laughs> I'm rolling good now. Yeah. Uh, 18. Nice. Plus six dexterity. And I don't know the other thing. Uh, so be, proficiency. Uh, plus, yeah, proficiency. Which would be but six two. is probably the proficiency plus dexterity already. Probably, yeah. So we'll say plus six, uh, which is more than enough anyway. Uh, so you managed to hit this bastard. So your crossbow bolt um, finds a, like it's wearing the same thing as the the big one that I described to Arlie um, in that it's, you know, it's covered in, in furs and it's got like bits and pieces of armor on it. Um, and your crossbow bolt sinks in between what looks like two of its ribs. Um, so you do some damage. Uh, so you're going to roll me your damage next, um, which for a crossbow, it should be on your sheet or I can look it up. 1d6, no? I believe so. You don't add your decks to the damage, do you? You do. No. You do. Bren Brandon just said yes, so let's go with that. I thought you did. No. Have I been doing it wrong, like, all these years, are they? Unless they changed it for 5e. Oh, yeah, 5e you do. Really? I'm, I'm going to double check that just to be on the safe side. But... Oh, I'm not as familiar with 5e rolls. But before we check it, let's just add that to the damage. <laughs> for susan <laughs> the 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 twitch chat is probably there's probably somebody in the twitch chat who knows way better than i do if uh, john is in there he'll know the rules <laughs> oh, bro, oh man if Just, john is in there I'd if john is in there he'll know poorly. <laughs> yeah okay so i'm supposed to <laughs> you guys are saying all this stuff and i'm like which sorry. dice it was the six sided dice. it was the right? six yeah sorry susan <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're geeking out about rules over here. Yeah, so, okay. so roll I got a, I got a four. Okay, so then plus whatever your dexterity bonus is. So that's six. Nice. Okay, so that's ten damage. That's not bad. Um, okay. Yeah. So that is some serious damage on this Krampus. He did not like that. Um, oh, Greg has confirmed that yes, you do add uh, dex to the damage bonus. Thank you. Sweet. Greg. Um, okay, so you're cross. So that attack was successful. Uh, you can move a little bit more if you want. Um, or you can stay where you are. It's up to you. No, I just want to yell at them that they suck. That's it. I'll stay here. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Love it. Um, okay, so it's now one of my Krampus's turns. So this Krampus here, the huge one that's marked with this red dot on the map, um, I'm going to roll a perception check for him to see who he notices. Oh, excellent. Okay, so um, he hears this like roar of pain from uh, the Krampus that um, Sarasi just shot. Um, he can hear something across the other way. 
um, as uh, Andrinan is, uh, you know, um, attacking the other one. And so he looks around and tries to get a sense of what's happening. Um, and uh, and uh, Baraya, unfortunately, um, his gaze settles on you. Um, and this hulking, um, you know, massive Krampus um, doesn't growl, doesn't roar. All you see is just like this huff of breath uh, through his nostrils, um, almost like a minotaur. Um, and he is going to advance towards you. Smart move. Thump, 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 thump. Um, let's see what's going to do here. For the record, I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Um, can I get actually both you, uh, Jotha, and um, Baraya to make me a wisdom saving throw, please? Oh, all right. Now I'm afraid. <laughs> Uh, sure. Wisdom saving throw. God damn it. <laughs> my roll is 15, and then uh, my bonus is plus five, I believe. Okay. Because I have extremely high wisdom. Very nice. Okay, so that's successful. Uh, Derek? I'm also oh. very wise, but I rolled a three. So three plus six, well, sorry, three plus four makes seven, but it depends also what kind of thing, because I'm I'm resistant to a couple of things. Yeah, what are you resistant to? Petrification, immediate death, poison. Okay, well, you, well you're not immediately going to die, which is good, given that it, this is the first round. But um, but if I were to immediately die, I'd have advantage on that roll. So <laughs> better. That's true, but luckily you are not about to die. Um, however, um, as, so the the Krampus as it looms over Bariah. Um, it starts to mutter something in a language that I don't think either of you speak. Um, or sorry, uh, Bri, what languages do you speak? We never sorted oh, that out. Oh, we never out sorted that out, right? Because, um, yeah, I mean, I do get extra languages. Okay. But we never had a conversation about what languages would be good for this world. So it, it might be that I do speak this language. Are they speaking fiendish? Uh, yeah, it's of... fiendish, so I'll say you can understand it um so that would, um, that would be of interest sure yeah okay yes yes yeah. so, so um all that's relevant is, is it, it mutters under its breath the words in, are, aren't particularly important but um you get the sense that it is it is muttering a, a foul curse of some sort um and as uh though you can almost see the words rippling in the air uh but you are prepared for them and so they kind of wash over you and and you kind of harden your soul against them and and they brush past you um jotha is like less lucky um and uh you hear this like like whatever a surprised sound would be from from jotha um and these words just kind of like sink into your very being um, and you can feel this like sudden pressure on, um, you know, on your soul and on your heart, Jotha, um, and you are unfortunately poisoned uh, by, by oh. just the strength of these words. But don't I have advantage on rolls against poison? I just said that. Did you say poison? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I missed that. Then uh, roll again. So we'll I see. am going to roll way better than a three. Watch this, everybody. <laughs> uh, six plus four uh yeah that's not enough so you're still poison sorry man all right um so what that means is that until the poison is lifted you have a disadvantage on all attack rolls and ability checks just okay. what kind of poison are these krampus using i that, that is an excellent question for my own <laughs> <laughs> professional curiosity yeah one poisoner to another. Um, you can maybe find out later. <laughs> um, okay, so that's that's okay. So that's his bonus action. Um, he is then going to raise this um, massive wooden club with like a rock at the end of it. He's just going to try to swing it at Baraya and roll a natural one. Uh, so <laughs> whoosh, <laughs> no good. Uh, but then it's my other Krampus' turn. Uh, so let's see here. So I'm going to go up here. So the Krampus that is facing um, Andrinan is, uh, they're all wielding clubs. So the one that's, that's facing you, um, you know, looks at, like, kind of glances at the spot where your chill touch just became one with the snow um, and gives this grunt of being totally unimpressed. Um, and uh, he's going to swing at you with his club. And I'm guessing that that's not going to hit that. Um, 
My AC is my AC is eighteen. Oh, oh no, sorry, it's... I, uh, Andrian, and I'm attacking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, my AC is also eighteen. So that yep. thank you. <laughs> not even yeah, with a ten, not even close. Um, which is just perfect. Uh, so that's not that. Okay, no, can't do that, can't do that. Okay, perfect. Um, however, I have two more Krampuses to play with here. So uh, one of them is gonna come over like here and he is also gonna try to hit you with his club. We're way too happy about this. <laughs> I get excited. And it's not I, on our side, guys. Yeah, Greg told you this at the start. I am not on your side. <laughs> um, however, that's a three on the die. I'm not even gonna look at the bonus. So that's even worse. Um, uh, what's this Krampus going to do? So he, so he only sees one of you. He knows that other stuff is going on. Uh, what would this Krampus do? This Krampus is going to head this way. So he's going to go one, two, three, four. He's going to go to there and start making his way south. Uh, this Krampus, which I will give that color to, um, is going to step over um, this mass, which, which um, Baraya, you, you've kind of gotten a glance at it, is, uh, looks to be a pile of bodies. Um, just gonna like step over it, squish, squish, squish. <laughs> um, oh, but the big one is clogging the way. That's not great. Uh, what's it gonna do here? <laughs> do the poison thing. So he's going to, he's gonna head south because he sees Susan. This one is going to go like so, and he's going to try to leap up onto the roof. Um, and I'm going to say he, yeah, so what that just manages to, so he, he kind of takes a running jump, latches onto the side of the roof with his uh, two clawed hands and starts to haul himself up. In the process of doing so, though, um, his club falls out of his grasp, um, and you hear it just kind of... Uh, land in the snow with this kind of soft whoomp. Um, but he is up on top of the roof, but without his club. So all of a sudden, Sarasi, you have this like um, much taller than you, Krampus, um, looming over you, uh, you know, with the-, the What, the what? <laughs> oh yeah, he's on the roof now. Um, and you notice that- um, and I, Which uh, one is this? The one that I hit or the other one? Oh, the one that you hit. So he's got the crossbow oh. board embedded in his ribs. Um, you notice too that he, that one of his horns is severed off halfway. So he, he, this one has clearly seen some action before. Um, and much like all the other Krampuses, which I forgot to mention at the start of the fight, um, he is wearing that mask that um, uh, Baraya described to you from his research, um, which in this case is is painted with these like blue and green uh, strips. Just looks like a simple. Um, you're not sure what the material is. Um, could be ceramic. Could be bone. Um, but uh, this this mask that um, is covering his uh, features, um, and he kind of leans in towards you. Um, and uh, Jay's just going to swipe at you with a claw because he doesn't have his uh, his club. Oh, that might hit actually. That is it's a strength. That's an eighteen. So, what is your armor class, uh, Sarasi? Nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> no, you must have an armor class. What armor? You have, you have armor. <laughs> I, I have know. no idea. It's like some cheap stuff. Leather okay, armor. Hold on, hold on. Let, me, let me look at your sheet. I know for sure that you have. But you have high dexterity. Um. Yeah, and also I want to tell him that the colors on his mask are so last year. <laughs> <laughs> the hell, man! I just got this mask. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, your armor class is a fifteen, um, but I did better than that. So um, you try to dodge out of the way, but the the claw kind of catches your shoulder, um, and he deals. Uh, I'm going to say three points of uh, slashing damage to you. So your hit points have been reduced by three. I have 17. Yeah, rogues are, are kind of squishy. Um, so you're okay for now. Um, and then this one is also going to move. One, two, three, four. He sucks. <laughs> yeah, they're not very nice, so he's going to go there. Um, but that is the Krampus's turn. Jotha, your turn. Okay. Um, because I'm now, uh, my poison, do I get to re-roll for it every turn to see if I'm done being poisoned, or how long that's, does this that's last? That's a good question. Let me double check this. Um, this first, uh, um, it, you, are, you cannot save against it again, but it's, it's a temporary effect, so it will fade. 
Okay, but I don't want to roll at disadvantage. So instead of using my guiding bolt, I'm going to, so I would like to use my poison spray. I can, I can do that through Arlie or do I have to move a bit? Um, I would say, I'll let you go. I'll let you shoot around because it's, yeah, there's not really anywhere for you to go, so. Well, he did describe himself as somewhat slender before. He did, he's wiry. Yeah, lithe. So um, I use the poison spray, which doesn't require me to uh, roll to hit, but the thing has to uh, roll constitution save. Okay. And hopefully you'll roll like a four or something. A four or even a five would be fine. A four or a five? Okay, I'll, I'll see if I can... Uh... Nope, that's a 17 on the die. So yeah. <laughs> so that does no damage. All right, man. Um, tough Krampus. Yeah. Tough, <laughs> tough Krampus. Um, I'm wondering if I want to move any. I'm about to move. Yeah, I think I'm just going to dart um, about six squares south so that I'm closer to the one that's attacking my uh, assassin friend. Okay, so um, just to get, the map is a little bit dark, so I'll just kind of point this out. So um, everything to like so immediately south of uh, you and Arlie um, is buildings. So to get to Susan, cool you'd have to either jump on top of the buildings or follow the path that she took and go around. So if you wanted to move, say, six squares, you could go like one, two, three, four. Oh, I'd say to like for there. right now, we, we have a fair bit of cover. You do. Okay, then I'm going to go um, maybe four squares back instead of six. And then okay. that way, uh, when the Krampus comes through or whatever, uh, I'll be ready to attack with it or something. Okay, so like about there, does that sound good? Yeah, that's that looks good. Done. Nicely done. Actually, well, can I change yeah. my mind? I'm going to go all six. You're going to go to six? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, so, just straight back so that I still can. Oh, just straight back. That. So like that. Yeah. There. Okay. Done. Uh, Sergeant Fissus. Um, oh, man. Um, what is he going to do? Has he recovered from the flirtation yet? I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to decide how much, how much the how much of an effect the flirtation has. Um, no, he's yeah, he's not going to abandon you. So yeah, he um, he is going to uh, he Brian, he says to you, um, don't worry, I've got your back. And then he's going to walk like this, um, and disappears into this building. Uh, through the only door, and so he disappears from your sight. Um, but you know that he has gone in here. Um, okay. So that's fine. And then, and then there's a moment where you're like, did that fucker just abandon me? Um, and then you see him, you hear a crash um, of like wood splinters, um, and you uh, see him reemerge on the other side, um, apparently having thrown himself through one of the shuttered windows, um, and ends up beside uh, this massive Krampus, long sword in hand, uh, with this like fierce look of determination on his face as he comes in and, and swings uh, to it, in fact come to your aid. It looks like he has advantage on his role, Brandon, because of flanking. He does, doesn't he? There you go like that. It's a good thing he has advantage, holy crap. Okay, that's better. Um, so uh, manages to, because you know, the, partly because the Krampus is facing away from him, um, slams his longsword in uh, right into the the center of this Krampus's back um, and does a decent amount of damage. What's the damage on that? Oh, that's not bad at all. Um, so that is, okay. How many points does he have left? Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, does a little bit of damage to that massive Krampus. Um, Noise. Yeah, so the sergeant is pulling his weight, uh, which brings us to Bariah. Okay, so... I can see the one on the roof approaching Susan, correct? Yes, you can. Because it's on the roof? Yep. Okay, so first, I'm going to do my Bankai, which means, in D&D &D terms, I'm doing... Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Channel Divinity Sacred Weapon. Uh, yes. Okay. So that is an act. It's a full action, which is yep. a stupid roll. But, oh, that um, is a stupid Yeah, but I do... Bunkai. <laughs> <laughs> My sword glows. Good. Um, and I get bonuses. 
So that is my full action. As okay. a bonus action, because I'm neutral good, yeah, and I'm in the mood, okay. I'm going to cast um, Compelled Duel Ooh. on the one climbing the roof after Susan. Okay. So like what it. this means is that Krampus, the fool on the roof, <laughs> has to make a wisdom save. Um, the difficulty is 15. And uh, if it fails, then it is drawn to me. And um, it will, if it doesn't come after me, if it continues to come after other people, it will get disadvantages. So go ahead and make a wisdom save with a DC of 15. DC of 15, all right. And ideally, yeah. Compelled duel. This, Compelled this duel. spell is a bonus action. I'm with you. I'll allow it. I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> So, in terms of the cast, it looks like this. Hey, <laughs> what about me? Come after me. Go. Um. So I got an eleven. Um, so so it you fails. Shout that. <laughs> you shout that across. Um, and you uh, failed, and, and your mask is ugly. He's just getting it from all sides. This poor guy. Um, and so he, like, he, he spins around that the insult against his mask momentarily forgotten as his, his yellow eyes just fixate on you with, um, just this, this insulted rage of like, how dare you, uh, you nice. have definitely gotten his attention. So this lasts for one minute. Okay. And, um, if it attacks anybody other than me, it has disadvantage um, and, and must make a wisdom saving throw every time it attempts to move to a space that is more than that is more than 30 feet away from me. So in other words, if it doesn't try to come after me, even even trying to go in any other direction other than towards me, it has to make a wisdom saving throw. Um, yeah, or its movement is restricted. In order to move anywhere but towards me, it has to make a saving throw. Okay, sounds good. Um, do you want to move it all? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, because I'm wedged between these two buildings, right? Yeah, you are a little bit. Yeah, no, I'm fine where I am. Okay. All right, and uh, that is my turn. That is a clutch turn, my friend. That is awesome. Okay, uh, top of the round brings us back to Andrine and facing two Krampuses. What would you like to do? Uh, not die would be a good start. <laughs> <laughs> you you were gonna die, so I feel like if you don't, <laughs> yeah. Um, so at this point, I probably am just going to flat out attack them okay. with my scimitar. So let's see how this goes. Okay, uh, which one are you attacking? Just so I know. <laughs> doesn't matter i rolled a one. Oh no i told you this was going to happen oh this is yeah that, that's not good yeah so uh swing and a miss that is unfortunate um anything else you want to do um like i don't know what a medium has for uh bonus actions and stuff but i uh, most of mine are so i is there a way i can use soul points because i have the ability to regenerate them so i feel like i should actually use them that's true. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. If, yeah, if a medium has ways to use so much, I apologize. I, I didn't get a chance to look at the medium specifically in terms of what they can do. Um. Um, so, let's see here. I I have the ability to use Misty Step just as a okay. Yeah, we, 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 um, which would cost a soul point. Okay, so let me try not not now because it's an action, but I'm gonna try the chill touch again next time. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so I don't think there's really anything else I can do. I have the reaction still, so I will use that. Okay, sounds good. I know I'm gonna get a hit. Uh, sorry, uh, I was so uh, you're using a reaction to do what, sir? When I get hit, I'm going to try reacting to see if I can actually do oh, something perfect. because right now I'm just embarrassing myself. Okay, sounds good. I, I believe in you. You got this. Believe right. in my dice. <laughs> I, I just got to will the dice to, uh, to do better. 
Um, okay, so that's your turn. Uh, Sarasi, it is now your turn. So the um, the Krampus that is on the roof with you that you viciously insulted um, now appears to be looking back at Baraya. Um, what would you like to do? Okay, I have a question. I have an answer. I seem to have this thing where I can produce flames from my hand. Yep. So, first of all, can I, like, move away from this horrible thing? Like, <laughs> it's, there seems to be a smaller outbuilding on next to this roof. That's correct, yep. Can, am I able to get onto that? Uh, yeah, you can get there pretty easily. Uh, but okay. I will warn you, though, that um, in 5e, if you move away from an enemy that is right up against you, um, they get what's called an attack of opportunity. So he'll get a, a swing at you. At oh, no, well, he can get lost. I'm very annoyed with this person. <laughs> okay, let's just burn his self. <laughs> okay, do it. Okay, so what do I do? I roll this 20. Yeah, so you roll the 20 um, and add the, sh the bonus should be on the sheet I sent you. Where where does it say bonus? Let me see here. Just look, just oh, hit dice. Okay, I have to use the eight sided dice. No? Um, let me see. Um, da -da -da -da. Okay, so make me, so it's a ranged spell attack. So roll me the d20. Okay. And then you're going to add six to that. 11. Okay, 11 total or just 11 on the die? Oh, 11 plus six, so oh, nice. 17. Okay. Perfect, yeah, okay, so that'll hit. Um, so uh, yeah, so you uh, generate this flame in your hands. Um, you feel the heat kind of burning across your fingertips and then you throw it right in this creature's face, right at that hideous mask. Um, yeah. Roll me a D8, so the eight-sided die. Um, and just a straight roll, but you don't add anything to it. Okay, this is the one that's eight, right? Okay. Yeah, that's kind of like pyramidy, or no, not pyramidy. Um, it's Ramos? two pyramids. It's two pyramids. It's I two pyramids kissing. <laughs> Wait, that's the wrong eight side. That's not Actually, eight. It's, it's not two pyramids. <laughs> okay. It it, it's not good. It, well, it's not bad. It's five. That's not bad. Yeah, so yes, the flame uh, kind of licks up the side of uh, um, the furs that are covering its, its body. And so, you know, there's uh, smoke rising from it, and, you know, flames kind of crisscrossing his face. He did not like that. Um, so that's your attack. You can still move if you want. Oh, and I should remind you, sorry, um, as a row, um, I know I was talking about attacks of opportunity, and so I'm, I haven't played fighting in a while, so I'm a little fuzzy. Um, as a rogue, you can use your bonus action to disengage, meaning he won't get that attack of opportunity if you want to move. But early put that bad, like, bad witchy things on him so that, like, if he does anything, he has a disadvantage, right? That's true. So you're in a pretty good spot right now. And the other thing is, when he turns around and goes, because he's so compelled, Susan will have an attack of opportunity, another chance to stab yeah. him. That's true. But these things don't die. This one's pretty close to death. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Okay, so you're staying where you are, Susan? Well, yeah. If if I move away, he's going to hit me with my 14 point self, so. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do that. Okay. Right? So, like, if I move yeah. away, he gets to hit me anyway. Like, he gets to attack. Um, not if you disengage. Sorry, I forgot. Rogue has a special ability. You can. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me disengage. I don't okay. want to engage with you anymore, sir. Sorry, that, that's my fault. Uh, I should have reminded you of that. So, um, do you want to go to that outbuilding you mentioned before? Yes. Okay. So, that can get you maybe to about there. How's that? Perfect. Excellent. Well, um, so then, okay, so let me go to my big, what is referred to as a bloody Krampus, which is a huge Krampus. Um, <laughs> and so he is facing the two of you. That sergeant um, did a number on him, but uh, I think he's smart enough to figure out that um, Bariah is the, the bigger threat. Oh, um, Bariah, can you, actually, no, uh, I'll have you do it on your turn. Um, yeah, he's going to whirl around and he's got this giant club. He's going to try to hit you in the face with it. Um, 
Oh, okay. Uh, Jamie, I just saw you thing in the chat. Noted. Yeah, I just <laughs> I missed that when I was looking at it. So that's okay. Um, maybe when it comes to your turn, I'll I'll we'll correct. And wave. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you do one more uh, to kind of make up for it. Oh, okay. That's gonna. Uh, that is. Uh, where is this club here? That is a twenty-two to hit, Araya. So that's gonna hit that, which means where's this club? Oh, that's not great. Oh, that is um, yeah, that is uh, twenty points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Sorry, dude. Um, yeah, as he just like wallops you with this club. Um, yeah, that, yeah, and looks pretty satisfied with that. Um, you notice uh, behind him, Sergeant Ferris just gets like this wince of like, Ugh, um, as he sees you take that blow. It's um, fine. Oh, good. <laughs> now my other Krampuses, because they basically go right after each other. Um, it concerns me that you refer to them as my Krampuses. Just, <laughs> they're my just friends. Saying. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to start with the ones north where uh, where Andrinan is. Um, so um, we uh, we were talking in the chat. Um, Andrinan can actually re-roll um, on ones and twos. Um, so really quickly, do you want to make, make me an attack, another attack roll? Well, to re-roll that one now, see if you land a hit before this guy goes. Nineteen. Nineteen. So that will hit. Uh, so roll me your damage. Uh, hold on. Let me scroll back to the. Right. So it's slashing and it's a four. Okay, noted. Uh, four total? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's four damage. I'll say against the, the yellow one. Um, okay, so you score that against him. Uh, so that, well, that's corrected from your previous turn. So you still have your reaction ready to go if you want it. Um, yes. As the yellow Krampus is going to try to hit you back with its club. Oh, it's going to miss horribly. These guys can't hit. Okay, let's try the green one. Laughing at his friend. Um, that is... Uh, that's a 15 to hit, which I don't think hits. I have 18 AC, so... Yeah, so no, that misses too. So just He's too busy off. laughing. <laughs> yeah, it's like, a, look at, you know, putts and then basically does the same thing. Um, All right, so I am sending my ghost... I to ambush this guy. So the Perfect. text for that is at the end of the target's next turn, okay. the ghost thinks it's at the real clause, I roll 2d6. If the result is equal to or greater than the remaining hit points of the target, the latter is reduced to zero hit points and is treated as dying. Holy crap. Um, okay, so that, that does happen now, it happens on the end of its next turn? End of next it? turn, yes. Okay, noted. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, it's a really nice ability. <laughs> That's amazing. Wait, out of curiosity, what does your ghost look like? Uh, ghost is a fairly slender, pale uh, person who just kind of likes to stay out of sight, but has some major rage issues. Okay. I like it. Okay, so okay, so at the end of his next turn, okay, I've got the ghost written down. Perfect. Um, so my other Krampus is. Um, so the one that uh, our I, Krampus is maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see here. So the one that uh, Bariah had uh, chatted, compelled the duel, uh, he's going to make an athletics check. Decent. Um, and uh, you watch as he leaps from this building to the one next to it. Not a, not a big gap between them, but makes it across no problem. And this dude can still leap? Oh, hell yeah. Um, and then he's going to, so that's one, okay. Can he get it? Oh, I can't quite get there. So he, he's going to get to here. So he gets to the, the top of the building to your right, Bariah, and is looking down at you. Um, it's really, and, um, what's he going to try to do? He is going to, surprisingly, like Jotha, um, these things carry around. Does he have a rock? Oh, no, he doesn't. He doesn't have his club. So he, he, he looms down. Not dead, smart um, enough. Yeah, he can't, he's not smart enough to carry rocks. Um, so uh, unfortunately, he can't reach you because that was all of his movement, but he's there ready and poised to strike. Um, and I've got two more. So this one, having seen where um, Sarasi is going, he's going to go 
five, 15, 20, 20, because he's going to go to here. So he's trying to circle around. This one, he's going to go, can you get to the, yeah, okay. Then he can just get to the sergeant. Um, and he's one of the ones that's wielding what looks just like a giant tree branch. Um, so one of the, the things that um, Briah had found out in the snow. Um, and so he is going to actually get the bonus for flanking. So he is going to attack the sergeant uh, when I think misses. Yeah, so the sergeant sees him coming, ducks underneath the branch and actually just like laughs at him, laughs in his face. Um, and then the blue one is going to, a lot going on there. He's going to go five. Uh, and then he's going to use his action to double move to link up with this guy. Or as much as he can. So they're trying to circle around the building um, to try to help with you folks. Um, and by help, I mean destroy. Um, <laughs> Chelsea, your turn. Okay. Um, I'm now the what I wanted to do, Brandon, was run up behind Arlie and cure light wounds on him. Okay. But I don't want to then move away and have an attack of opportunity on me. But that thing that is within five feet of him is on the roof. So in theory, I shouldn't, right? That's correct. Yeah, he wouldn't be close enough to do it. Okay. So I will run right up behind Arlie. Okay. Oops, not on top of cast uh, Cure Light Wounds and then okay. use the remainder of my movement to walk away. And depending on who I see around me, I might cast Healing Word too, or depends on how the roll goes. Okay. Sounds good. So um here's my d8 it's gonna roll really big guys <laughs> seven seven plus seven so 14 points of healing to our oh, nice nice and i think i'll leave it at that then and then use the rest of my movement to uh back away because i'm gonna have to try and figure out um how to become effective even though i'm poisoned okay so Poisoned am I still, Brandon? Oh, uh, you are no longer poisoned. It only lasts until the end of uh, the Bloodthirsty Krampus's uh, next turn. So you're, the, you oh. feel the poison lift. It's a temporary effect. This is easy. I thought you made it hard, Brandon. <laughs> oh, just, oh, just wait. <laughs> Stop helping. Okay. Well, um, all right. So how much can I back away from where... You uh, can't because you used all your movement to get there. Okay. If Don't anyone worry. is really hurting, by the way, and can get to me, I have the ability. I have some shield abilities. Mm -hmm. So if you're starting to really feel it, go ahead and come closer to me, and I can cast that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna try and keep the party on its feet too. Cool. All right. So that is uh, Jotha's turn. Uh, Sergeant Fissus is going to, you know, being kind of boxed in. He shouts to Baraya, uh, "Don't worry, this is what we're made for," and he's gonna uh, try to Literally. swing the. <laughs> uh, he's going to swing at the, the Krampus that came up on him um, and it's actually going to be going to hit him um, he's doing better than anybody else the orange um, one uh, the orange one yeah because uh, he figures you have the other one um, and uh, is going to swing at that one and lands a pretty solid hit does 11 damage to that one uh, which brings us down to that uh, but he's stuck there he can't move or do anything else um, which brings us to Briah I'm attacking the bloody Krampus. The bloody Krampus. <laughs> yeah. Um, I rolled a four, but um, my bonus is I get a plus four to attack. And then because I did my Bankai, mm -hmm. that gives me another plus five, and it's a, considered a magical weapon. Oh, so nice. that's a total of plus nine. Okay. Um, so, so so plus nine is the bonus or, or nine total for the roll? Nine total. No, so the roll no, is 13. 13. 13. Okay, so 13 on the bloody Krampus. So even with all of that, you swing in and it just bounces off. of This one appears to have studded leather armor underneath its first, just bounces off the, the chest plate of that. Um, and so not quite enough to break through, unfortunately. Sad. Um, Sad. Yeah. 
so in that case, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to curse under my breath. That is fair. And uh, as a bonus action, okay. I am going to drink one of these healing potions. Do it. Okay, so it's a regular healing potion. So roll me uh, two d4. So two pyramids uh, yeah. plus two. So my roll is three plus two is five. Nice. So five more hit points to use there. Okay, that brings me back to thirty. Yeah. Nice. And I'll mark off one of these potions from my sheet. Perfect. Thank you. I just saw in the Twitch chat, "Thou shalt not taunt the DM." That is correct, chat. <laughs> um and for as a point of reference because i attacked the bloody mm -hmm. that releases the um pink krampus from the sway of the compelled duel okay noted although he did come all the way over here he did i'd say it accomplished it yeah um and i should okay so at the end of your turn i'm gonna, I'm gonna have you do two things which i should have done at the start of your turn and, and uh, i was not keeping track so i mentioned at the start of this game that there are soul points in nightfell uh, basically what the soul points are is um, the strength of your uh, soul, your ability to bear the brunt of the various horrors that you might experience in this war, such as Krampuses. Um, and there's an interesting mechanic in Nightfell wherein um, you're, like when you're casting spells, if those spells are not um, divine spells, um, then uh, it costs you a soul point to cast them. Uh, so Arlie, your compelled duel, I believe, cost you one soul point. But I'm a paladin, so all of my spells are divine spells by definition. Are they? Yeah, because they are they're the channeling of divine energy. I would unless like to... unless there's I, I... a different def unless there's a specific definition of divine spells. Um okay, so the definition that sorry, divine is a little loose. So uh the way that Nightfall okay. defines it is um you need the words either um holy, divine, or faithful in the spell's name. That's very narrow. That's very narrow. <laughs> Holy, divine, or faithful. Oh, yeah, or faithful, yeah. That, that's rather specific. Uh, I, I would broaden it a little more based on Paladin stuff, but I would say your Compelled Duel still costs you one soul point. OK, that is, OK. But you've got like 15 or something. I have 11, yeah. OK, yeah, so you, you get lots. You're, you're all good. Yeah. And none of none of my spells have those words in them. There are a few that, like, um, say, like to me, like a, a healing spell would count. I'm, I'm playing it a little loose with the the soul point requirements. So um, okay, yeah. So some of the some of the spells I, and especially because it's a one shot, like some of the spells I would um, I would allow it, but that's just me. If anyone from Mana Project Studio is watching and disagrees, I apologize. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. continue. Okay, so uh, top of the round, um, and Drynan, you're up. Top of the round to you. All right. Um, so I'm going to just hope that the ghost takes care of that one, the yellow one, I think it is, that's yep. got attached. Um, is the green one injured at all? He is not. OK. I am going to attempt to attack him again with the scimitar. Okay. Actually, hmm. Yeah, I'll, they don't have regeneration, do they? Uh, no. Okay, then I'm not going to waste a necrotic spell that just blocks regeneration. So I'm attacking with the scimitar. Uh, I rolled a whole eight. Let me see if I have anything I can attach to that. Yeah, so it should be your strength plus your proficiency. Yeah, so it gives me a 13. 13 is just not enough. So same thing, it just bounces off whatever armor plates it has underneath its furs. Okay. Sadly, I don't yeah. have a reroll option. Oh, no. no. Okay. <laughs> with an eight. Um, anything you want to do with your bonus action? Um, with the bonus action, I'm going to move and hopefully am i able to move out of reach of i don't want to take two attacks from these guys yeah if you move you'll get uh two attacks of opportunity though okay yeah i'll just stay put okay yeah so you're kind of in a tight spot there yeah 
You can disengage though. Oh, but she has an action. action. Yeah. 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 And my ghost is currently occupied, so I can't, Mm -hmm. I won't be able to do that until next turn. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully your ghost can, yeah, can do some serious damage on this guy. Um, Oh, uh, at the end of your turn, can you make me a wisdom saving throw, please? Sure. That's not concerning. Totally fine. I probably, I mean, it might not be fine. Uh, so I rolled an eight again, and I have, so 10? 10. Um, so facing this dire situation is you have these Krampuses on either side of you, and, and you know, your first time facing these creatures, you look into the, you know, their, uh, you know, these painted masks and, and just, you know, their horns, and, the, you know, you can see their, their uh, toothy jaws underneath the, the bottom of their masks. Um, and, and you're reminded that this is a horrifying wilderness that you have found yourselves in. Um, and you unfortunately lose one soul point as a result. Okay. Then um, did that technically occur at the end of my turn? At the end of your turn, yeah. Okay. The next time I'll roll to regain my soul points. Okay, perfect. Um, so that's Andrinan. Sarasi, you're up. Okay. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really pissed off at these Krampus. Like, but I want the one that was bothering Arlie to die. Now, I have a vendetta against that one specifically. Okay. He's within so range of your want, Yeah. So I want to, first of all, this other one is coming towards me, but I want, so on the map i'm on this little little outbuilding yep um how far can i get onto the other building what is it that's right next to me i think uh, how many to minutes? your left i don't know speed 30 i don't understand how much can i move <laughs> that yeah so it, basically it's six squares do you mean the building um to your left on the map yeah to my left well you can get on there no problem so you could go yeah so i want to go on there the six spaces okay i would say you can get to about there right and then i want to use my crossbow on that pink bloody krampus when will this thing die let's find out okay which thing do i roll the 20 uh yeah so d20 will she get sneak attack i she will actually yeah okay 16 okay 16 16. plus what do I do again? Sorry. That's okay. 16 is enough. So we won't worry about the bonuses. So uh, so 16 is enough to hit. Um, so roll me your damage. Roll, roll me my damage? Yeah, it is enough to hit. Like you had. Oh, so I have to roll now. Which one do I roll? The uh, 20? So, uh, no. So uh, the D6. Right. Okay. And then do you remember, uh, the sneak attack, I think, is also D6. Oh, short bow. Yeah. Okay. Plus it four. Is. So okay. it's it's a D6 for the arrow and two D6 for the sneak attack at level three. Okay. Okay. Uh, five. Five. Okay. But now roll plus two more four. six-sided die. Sorry? Roll two more six-sided die because you're a thief and because that pink one is beside your allies you're particularly good at hitting it and you get two, two six-sided die more of damage, plus you add your dexterity bonus. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I got a three and a six. Plus and a five six. makes 14, plus your dexterity makes eight. Which is six. So how much was that? 18 total, I think. Nice, which is enough. And so- uh, Can he die? Oh yeah. So you fire your crossbow and it, it sinks into the back of his neck. Um, and from Arlie, or sorry, from Brian and, and Joseph's perspective, this cramp is just like jerks forward and falls sideways off of the roof, landing in the snow um, just at Jotha's feet. He is dead as a doornail, nicely done. First kill. Nice. First kill. Guys, <laughs> take his mask. <laughs> I love it. Um, so that's your movement. Okay, so you have your bonus action, Soul Susan. So you can uh, use that to hide. You can use it to move again because you're a rogue. Oh, you're still muted, Susan. I feel like uh, okay. Um, I can move again or no? You can, yeah, because you're a rogue. 
I, I want to move maybe about three more spaces forward because, um, yeah, because everybody is over on this side and I'm all by myself on that side. So I want to get closer to them. Perfect. Sounds that's good. it. It's done. Um, so that's right. Okay, so the bloody Krampus did not. Okay, so freaking Bri is back up to full health. He did not like that. So he is going to... Um, Baraya and Joseph, if you could make me a, another wisdom saving throw, please. Words you never want to hear from a DM. Never. Make yeah. a wisdom saving throw. Okay, this time I'm going to do... I rolled an 18, and I have crazy bonuses. I mean, oh. I have uh, I have really good bonuses. So, Perfect. Brandon, because yes, there sir. was that comment about don't, you know, talk back to the DM... I'm going to say it. Suck it, DM. There's a 22. <laughs> How'd you do there? For regular listeners, um, suck it, DM is a comment that I bring up probably more often than twice. <laughs> All the time. Um, so with that, so yeah, so same thing. So uh, this bloody Krampus, you know, mutters this, this powerful curse. Um, but it rolls off of both of you. You're ready for it this time and you, you kind of harden yourselves against it and it has no effect, which he does not like. Um, so he's going to try to club uh, Baraya again. Just not get any advantage or anything, which is kind of unfortunate. Oh, that's not great. That is, that's a 15, which is not enough. Um, so Baraya, you're able to deflect it out of the way. Um, he is not having a good time at this. Um, and that is his turn. Um, Okay, so the uh, my other Krampus is this here. So the green Krampus, so the, the one of the two that is fighting Andrinan is gonna same thing, try to hit you with its club. <sighs> misses. Uh, yellow one is gonna try to hit. Oh, that might hit actually. Nope, that's gonna miss too. You're just like every blow is just you're is just blocking. Um, and so uh, the yellow one, um, your ghost takes effect now. All right, so it's roll two d6. How many hit points does he have left? Uh, he has 18 left. All right, doesn't do anything, sadly. Ah, uh, shoot, okay. Um, and does the ghost stay in there? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so you can kind of see, like, I mean, you know how to look for him, but you can see, like, the ethereal glow of your ghost kind of moving about its body. He doesn't know what to do. Like, he kind of notices it, and he's like, but it doesn't have any effect, so he's a little concerned about it, but... Um, <laughs> this will <laughs> be a problem later, buddy. Yeah, this is not great um okay i'm gonna speed through i'm just keeping an eye on the time because i know we have a hard 6 p.m uh end time uh for the channel so i'm gonna speed through my other krampuses um orange one is gonna swing the sergeant oh it's gonna hit the sergeant okay um does almost no damage though sergeant still has this just grin on his face um this krampus is gonna go 5 10 15 20 25 30 He's going to try to, okay, let's make an athletics check is not enough. So he tries to scrabble onto the top of the building, doesn't make it, slides back into the snow. So Sarasi, you're for the moment okay up there. Um, this one is going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So basically you've got, you know, these two um, Krampuses uh, running along the path, basically, Sarasi, that you took before chasing after you. Um, is this one going to make it onto the roof of that building? With a natural 20, he is. So he leaps up onto the top of this roof. Um, and so Sarasi, you see him land there and the roof actually like creaks underneath him from the weight of this Krampus. Um, and he is going to go, um, it's going to take his action to move. So 510 gets to here. Uh, so he is able to get to you, but he can't attack because he used his action to move. Uh, but you have a, a Krampus right up in your grill once again. Um, and that's all of my get a life like we do. <laughs> Gotta beat him off with a stick. Um, so that's the cramps is Jota, your turn. You're muted. Oh, Derek. I really want to get closer to James, but I don't see how to do it. Um so um you uh you could you'd have to loop around it would, it would it would take like a turn and a half to get there. But yeah, it'd be like skipping the the Suez Canal to go around uh, the whole <laughs> continent. Kind of. Um, yeah. I think what I'm going to do is now that I'm not poisoned, I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt at the one that's beside Suzanne. Uh, Susan. 
and okay. uh, then we'll see what happens. Okay, yeah, and you can see him from uh, your perspective. Yeah. So I'm going to back up one step, and then I'm going to uh, attack. Uh, left there. I got a 14 plus four, I think, or six. Yeah, so uh, a, a, a dirty 20. Dirty 20 is enough? Yeah. And then I think I get, what is it, 46? I'm trying to. Uh, what spell was it again? Uh, guiding Bolt. Oh, OK, yeah. Yeah, it's 46. And then, OK, I'll roll that. Sorry, I'm in the dark. Did your candle go? <laughs> oh, wow. But it's we worth didn't it. notice. I rolled a 20 for damage. Whoa, dude. Yeah, it was all fives and sixes. Good God. So that's the blue one, eh? Uh, yeah, and and so then on whoever attacks it next also has advantage on attacks. Okay, um, your guiding bolt like scours the side of this thing's face. And I'm going to say actually, um, roll me a d20. Don't add anything to it. Just roll the d20. Eight. Eight. Okay. Um, so you watch. So it, it, your guiding bolt hits it with enough force that you, um, Sarasi, from your perspective, you see the mask tilt on its face. Doesn't come off. That was what the D20 was for, <laughs> but, but, it's, but it, it, it's hanging loose. So we almost lost his mask just from the force of the Guiding Bolt. Um, not bad, dude. Um, anything else you want to do on your turn? Um, I don't have bonus actions, really, except for one of the healing ones, and I don't think I need to use that yet. So I think I'm just going to go about three or four squares to the left, um, just so, uh, and, and I would be on the same row as Arlie so that I can shoot down either on the rooftops or to the right. Okay. Sounds good. Um, and your guiding bolt will also cost you one soul point. So you can mark that down. Please. Okay. How many soul points do I have? Uh, you've got a lot. So you've got 15 as a cleric. 50 or 15? 15, one five. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and yeah, for yeah, for a one shot, I, I doubt any of you will get to a point where you run out. Um, and in terms of a campaign, for anyone who's interested in Nightfell, uh, they do replenish on a long rest, like hit points do. Um, so uh, in terms of keeping track of them, um, it's not it's not a debilitating sort of mechanic, um, but uh, it is something else to be cautious of in this dark world that we find ourselves in. Um, so that's Jotha's turn. The sergeant. Oh, I didn't make a roll for him for his soul points. Speaking of which. Oh, he's fine. Okay. Um, he's going to attack with his longsword again. Oh, he's going to miss. Um, I think. Yeah, no, I yeah, misses horribly. Um, you have noticed, though, Briah, that his form with this longsword is impressive. <laughs> when he doesn't hit, he looks pretty good. Um, and so that's all he can do, unfortunately. And Briah, it is your turn. I'm going to attack the bloody. Do it. Okay. And you have advantage. You do. I do. Because you're flanking. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay, so I rolled an eight, <laughs> but I have plus nine all total in bonuses. So it's but, a 17. Wow. 17 is enough. Okay, yeah. so now I am going to divine smite his ass. Okay, oh, uh, roll the advantage though in case you get a crit. Okay. Just in case, you never know. This is, the, see, this is me being a friendly DM. I rolled a four. Yeah, no, okay. So divine smite. <laughs> okay, so uh, basically the divine smite is going to add. Um, it burns a spell slot, but it adds two d eight damage. Ooh, nice. Um, let me mark off my spell slot real quick. Um, so the damage is going to be two um, d six plus four plus 2d8 extra of radiant damage. Ah, damn. Are you ready? No. Let's do, <laughs> we'll do 2d6 plus 4 first. Okay. Oh, shit. So I rolled a total of 4 Ooh. plus 4 is 8, so that's 8 damage. Okay. And then the extra uh, divine smite damage is 2d8, so that is going to be... 11 more. Nice. That's good. Okay. Yeah. So with that divine smite, you watch as this like crackling radiant energy kind of surges up um, this creature's biceps and, and up into his face and, and, and then into his horns. It kind of gives a jerk of surprise. Um, and for the first time in this fight, uh, you see um, a little bit of concern in his eyes. 
I'm kind of realizing <laughs> exactly what he's up against. Um, but uh, he's still kind of squared off against you. Not bad, dude. Uh, cool. <laughs> and um that is all i'm not really gonna do any bonusy stuff because i need the spell slots okay um yeah okay yep, that's it for me sounds good uh that was a good turn top of the round um and Ryan, we're back to you all right uh, if there's if there's weird groaning in the background, my dog has decided that she needs to be part of things, and if I stop petting her, she complains. So <laughs> just, just so everyone knows what the weird sounds in the background are if they happen. Noted. Um, so I am going to attack the yellow one since that's what the ghost is okay. attached to, and I want to get his points down. Sounds good. So I rolled a 15, so 19 total. Nice, that'll hit. Um, and then let's see, damage, ah, I lost where I was on the character sheet. All right. Uh, so rolled a six plus two, so eight. Nice. Good hit, good hit. Um, anything else or are you just kind of attacking? Uh -huh. Uh, I'm just attacking. Is okay. throwing a dagger a bonus? No, action? it's still just being attack. Okay, that's right. Yeah, I don't really have a lot of bonus actions except for summoning the ghost with this character, interestingly, right, yeah, yeah. that I saw. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's about it's just skimming it. I think that's about right. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit fighter base class is like level three. It's kind of just like hack and slash. Yeah. But, yeah. but that ghost is in there, so we'll come back to him on the Krampus' turn. Um, Sarasi. Okay. Um, so I'm still on the roof. Yep. So I want to move along the roofs six spaces. I think one, two, I think, would that get me like parallel to Derek? Um, if you go, like, let's say we go five, ten, or, or one, or you know, three squares this way, so you're parallel. That's the end of the roof, basically. Uh, if you go any further, you're going to be back to ground level. Okay, I'll 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 go five instead of six. Okay, uh, that'll still be ground level though. Oh, I'm I'm not on the roof anymore. Uh, you won't be if you move any further. Yeah, I don't want to go any further than that. Okay, okay, so we'll stop you there. Um. And then, so I didn't use the fire the last turn. I used it the turn before, but I don't understand what long rest means. Oh, okay. So basically what that means is you, you basically get it once per day. Um, so now that you've used it in this encounter, that's basically it. So you can't use it. So it's over. It's over, yeah. Okay. So I can, this thing hasn't attacked me yet. Um, so... Um, I'm the, uh, on the roof thing. Yep. So do I, don't I get that I get to attack, assassinate. Remember I had that assassinate? Yeah, I um, do. Um, so the way the assassinate works, unfortunately, is you, it only works on a creature that hasn't acted yet in the whole fight. Um, this one has. Ah, okay. Okay, well, let me just shoot this thing with the crossbow shoot. again. Cool. So you're going to roll your <laughs> oh, d20. Yeah. yeah, so roll your d20 twice um, and take the higher number. Okay. Because of Derek's uh, spell. Okay, one is 11. What is this? And one is 14. Ooh. So 14. Yeah, so the, yeah, the 14, yeah, and, and with your bonuses, that hits no problem. Um, and I'm not even going to ask you to roll the damage because with your sneak attack, you hit him with even the lowest result. Um, so your crossbow bolt sinks into his forehead, cracks his mask in half. Um, and he collapses to the ground or to the roof, rather, just slumps. Oops, delete him off the map. Uh, so that is a second kill for Sarasi. That is two kills. For no, but it's a team effort. It's a team effort because, because you know, the other people did all these like voodoo stuff, and like, and and it's not just me. So it was good. We killed two That's things. True. That's true. Teamwork. I love it. But that's two Krampus is down. Um, and that is 
Sarasi's turn. Nicely done. So that's the bloody Krampus now. Um, what is he going to do? He's kind of just pinned there. There's nothing. He's not really, not much he can do aside from uh, swing. He's trapped <laughs> the, by early strategic play. He is trapped by early strategic play. That was good. The good move. Well, and, and the sergeant, to be fair, if we're, if we're talking teamwork. Uh, so he's going to attack. the The Twitch chat is saying teamwork makes the dream work. I almost said that out loud, and then I was like, eh. um, oh, he's going to miss. So same thing, swings in with this club and just bounces off your armor, Bariah. He cannot land a freaking hit anymore. Um, but he's going to try for his poison again. Make me a wisdom saving throw. Okay. That works sooner or later. Uh, uh, I oh. failed. Um, yeah. That's a seven. Okay, so you know maybe because of the length of the fight, um you know uh, some maybe because the cold weather you're not sure um it, you get hit with this curse again and and it it sinks in this time um and so unfortunately you are poisoned uh which what? means so all that means is that on your next turn um your attacks are at disadvantage okay yeah so i'll remind you uh when we get there um let's see what kind of Krampus do okay so Krampus attack on the sergeant this is um one Krampus attack on Andrinan from the green one also misses. <laughs> um, the yellow Krampus, though, is going to try to attack. That is also going to miss, and then the ghost gets to make its go. Um, and it's currently at 10 hit points. The bloody Krampus? Uh, no, no, the yellow Krampus. Okay. Yeah, has the ghost. Uh, 11. Um, 11, sorry, to hit? Uh, it's roll 2d6 to see if basically it gets higher than oh. the hit points. It does. It only which reduces 10. it to zero. Okay. And the creature is dying. Let me double okay, yeah, so he's basically off the map. So you watch it, you know, this kind of look of concern on the Krampus's face deepens. Um, and you see that <laughs> like this, this pulse of light from inside it um, as your ghost finally gets a hold over um, kind of, let's, the insides of this Krampus. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it coughs a couple of times and shudders and like it's, and then suddenly its eyes roll back into its head and it just drops at your feet. Um, this one is toast. Nice. Not bad, not bad. Um, and then I've got one more Krampus here, which is chasing after, or no, it's, it's on the ground. So it's going to give up on trying to climb the roof. It's going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 and come at Jotha. Swinging a branch. <laughs> oh, and so I sound far too excited by this. Um, with a it's 20... more like you weren't able to hide your excitement. I really wasn't. Uh, with a 23 to hit, my friend. Uh, yeah, the 23 hits. That, that's going to hit. Uh, and so that is, mm -hmm. that's just a D8. Um, so that is, uh, that is 10 points of bludgeoning damage from that one. Yeah. Easy. Easy peasy. Um, and so that's him. And then so that's my Krampus's and Jotha, it's your turn. Okay. Um, I can't go anywhere um, because I would get an he would get an attack of opportunity. So I think what I'm gonna do is cast guiding bolt again. Okay. Uh, that'll be uh, at the one right in pardon? At disadvantage because you're within five feet. Oh, at disadvantage. Enemy. Uh, what about poison spray? That's not a disadvantage. It's a range of ten feet. Uh, if, it's ranged, just... if, if it's a ranged attack, it's still a disadvantage. But that one is just puffing gas out of my hand. Okay. <laughs> nice try, though, Derek. Okay. So the thing is, either give it an attack of opportunity or attack it with melee. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to use my mace, even though my mace is useless and I'm useless with a mace. I mean, you don't know until you roll. Oh, I rolled an 18 plus one. Look at that. That is far from useless. It's far from useless. Is it? It's D6, eh? And I rolled a six plus one. Nice. So and is... for my bonus action, I will use um, healing word on myself. Okay, perfect. Uh, which will heal uh, seven points. Nicely done. And that is the end of my turn, and I don't go anywhere. 
Okay, perfect. Uh, Sergeant, I've been told by uh, our illustrious host, uh, Greg Wilson, that we actually have a little bit more time here. So to wrap up this fight, which is cool. Um, and so I'm going to roll for the Sergeant. I'm just gonna take a swing at this other Krampus. Come on. Oh, that's gonna hit. So swings his long sword. Let's see if he does, how much damage he does. Oh, that's not bad. So uh, Bariah, you watch, and, and kind of Jothan's rest, you can see this from afar, you watch as um, with almost mastery um, as he wields this long sword, just kind of twirls it in his hands and takes off this Krampus's head with a single swing. Nice. Um, and you know, there's a moment where the, you know, the, the body just kind of sways there and then collapses backwards. Um, and he lets out this like loud whoop of almost joy at having felled this creature um, and then spins around ready to um, attack the bloody Krampus if it becomes necessary. Um, I mean, my charisma is 20. So getting my digits probably did a huge morale boost. So <laughs> he needs to live. <laughs> Um, and Bariah, it's your turn. Okay, I'm going to bring down my glowing sword of holiness on this fool. Do it. Oh, so that's a natural 20. <laughs> natural 20 is not bad, man. Okay, so you double the dice. Double the damage? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you double the damage, uh, just what's on the dice that you roll, not the bonus. Okay. Um, does that include the radiant damage from the smite I'm about to do? That includes the radiant damage from the smite. Sweet. Uh, I smite <laughs> this fool. Smite him. Um, so this is going to be a lot of damage. <laughs> okay. so, so we have 2d6 plus 4 yeah. from the basic. That is, oh, I rolled low, but it's double, right? So it's, uh, I rolled two, so it's four plus another four, it makes eight. Yeah. I assume that doesn't kill it. No, not yet. Okay, so now comes the smite, which is um, an extra 2d8. Okay. So that's 13. Bad. Do I um, double that as well? 13, yeah, so 13 doubled. Is twenty six. Um, as they say um, in in other campaigns, which are much more famous than anything I've ever done, how would you like to do this, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> Split down the middle with holy fire. Nice. So as you as you slice down the body of this thing, um, like the seam that you are creating just crackles with flame, um, searing down its body and just kind of parts the middle. And doesn't even because of how big this creature is doesn't even thump to the ground, just kind of thumps to the side and hits the walls on the <laughs> side and just kind of stops there. <laughs> um, nice. But he is toast. I'm like, I said Bankai. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, sir. All right. So he's done. Um, would hey. you like to do anything else with your turn? Uh, hang on one sec. I, that would burn another spell slot, so I'm out it of would, spells. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to, I mean, I don't have any actual stuff I can do. Oh, I can do a move. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Uh, so I'm going to move up to close with the one that's facing Derek. OK. Done. All right. So that's can that. You, oh, can you sorry. put me flanking him? Yes, you can. Yes, I can. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. All right. Uh, let's move to the top of the round. Um, and Dryden facing one more Krampus. I'm going to attempt to hit it in a very original attack. Okay, let's do this. Ah, 19. Oh, so 19 21. That's perfect. Roll some damage. All right, so eight. Okay, nicely done. Okay, so he's still standing, but that was a solid hit. And then for my bonus action, I'm going to uh, ready the ghost again. Okay, perfect. So the ghost, 
we watch as its form slinks into this Krampus and the Krampus like has seen what's happening and tries to back away but <laughs> the ghost just sinks inside I don't like those guys it's like I don't want it I don't want it I don't want it I don't want it let me get rid of it um but it is starts slapping at itself basically yeah so but that like, nothing he can do um and his hit points are low too which is not good um Sarasi, your turn okay what's what's better to do i have this crossbow i could shoot at the thing between eric and arlie or i could shoot at the thing james is fighting who should i shoot um the one that james is fighting you can't quite see from your perspective because they're low to the ground oh okay i can't see okay and so I i'll just be able to take care of them yeah the ghost okay shot. so i'll shoot the one nearest me then I, I, I have forgotten. It's 20, right? The 21? It is, yeah. Sorry, yeah. D20 plus 6. Right. Okay. 18! So 24. Oh, that, will, that will hit. So do I have to do anything else? Uh, yes, yes you rule. rule your damage. Three six-sided dice. Right. Okay. Plus 4. Yeah. Okay. 2 plus 3 is 5. And... Yeah. Two is seven plus four is eleven. Eleven. Um, that is actually just enough. <laughs> Crossbow bolt sinks into its skull, thumps to the ground in between uh, Mariah and Joe. You're just kind of looking down at it, um, having expected uh, to have to deal with it a little bit longer, but it is toast. <laughs> we should call Susan's crossbow the coup de gras. Right? Holy crap. These people may be mad. <laughs> um, so then in the interest of time, I'm going to jump to... Okay, so uh, unless there's anything else you want to do, uh, Sarasi, on your turn. I'm good. Okay. Uh, so we jump to the Krampuses, and this this might do it. So uh, Final Krampus is going to take one last desperate swing at um, Andrinan. Uh, oh, it's actually going to hit. Got um, the 19 on the die. Ooh, so, Andrian, you take seven points of uh, bludgeoning damage from its club. Oh, no, I'm down to 21. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever will we do? Um, and uh, that's all it can do, which means the ghost gets to act. It rolled an 11. The 11 is enough because it only has eight hit points left. So the final Krampus, how would the ghost like to do this since this is our last Krampus? <laughs> <laughs> I, essentially, the ghost just pulls the life force out of the Krampus and I uh, returns to my shoulder. Nice. Yeah. Sucks the life force out and, and, you know, returns to you. I love it. Um, and the last Krampus drops to the ground. Um, and you folks, it appears, um, have saved the day. And uh, Greg has just said in the Twitch chat that we are into the mock the enemy phase of combat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, folks. Um, so we are okay. So um, we are slightly over time. Like I said, uh, Greg gave us a little bit of extra time. So uh, if you folks are cool with it, I'm going to do a quick little uh, sum up. Um, but that was excellently done. Um, so the, with the Krampuses laid waste, um, you do a quick search of this village um, and you find some survivors. So uh, there's some Garnar who are kind of like half orc sort of uh, beings in this world. Um, who had been um, kind of thrown together in into one of the outbuildings that you hadn't found yet. Um, and had you not come around, um, would have eventually been dinner for uh, the Krampuses along with the, the that pile of bodies were basically like the village defenders who were the first to be killed. Um, and so all that's left basically is kind of, you know, the, the old folks and the kids and, and anyone who couldn't put up a fight. Um, and the, uh, the head of this village is this elderly uh, Garnar named Rodvast is just overwhelmed with with gratitude um, at you folks for having come and, and saved him and his people um, in their time of need. Um, however, uh, he mentions that um, the, these are not the last of the Krampuses, um, that uh, you know this was only half of the group and that the other half um, stole away into the night uh, with some of his people uh, for purposes that he does not know. And so um, perhaps we're, you know, um, if there's ever an opportunity to do this again, um, your next task might be to um, hunt those Krampuses down and continue to, you know, bring security to the lands of Alper, um, which Sergeant Fissus loudly proclaims is exactly what you should do. 
um yeah but that brings us uh to the end of i feel like that flew by but um uh, so uh again uh, thank you to the four of you for joining us um and and playing um how did you like nightfell it was still like that Cool. I liked it. I've never played D and I didn't know anything what I was doing, but we killed everybody. It was great. <laughs> uh, yeah, you did it. Yeah, for some like yeah, for some this is your, literally your first time playing D and D, but I thought you kicked ass, Susan. Yeah. <laughs> One pretty- thing I do do is Jotha goes around and he takes two stones out for every one that they've killed. <laughs> and he puts the two stones on each one so that he doesn't lose count. And he explains to his friends that the way he counts it, to be sure, is he counts the number of feet and then divides by two. And then whatever's left over in his pouch, which is now six, he's like, this is how many we've got left. And if you count the number of feet, that's three. I'm not very good at math, but I don't think that's how math works. (laughs) Oh, man. That was delightful. Um, thank you so much, Brandon, for running the session. Yes. Oh, thank no, you. thank you. No, it, it was my pleasure. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was really fun. Is there anything, like, character-wise, is there anything else anyone else would like to do? Um, I, have, character we'd be doing? I have 15 points of lay on hands. So if any of, the, any of the villagers are harmed, I can spend those points healing them and letting them know about the power of my deity in helping them with their life. And um, I'll also be eyeing the tracks to see if, you know, I can figure out if, if it's feasible for us to follow the ones that got away. Okay, noted. Yeah, and even just on a quick uh, glance, you're pretty sure that, yeah, with enough investigation, you could find their trail. Um, yeah. Yeah. I have and, healing word. So without the sermon, I'll apply <laughs> for that. I'm, I, I'm picturing Brian with like little pamphlets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah, so, yeah. Sorry, go Secretly, ahead. I know that Daniel Day Kim just wants to keep going because he wants he doesn't want to lose the vibe. So I'm like, that's fine. You know, okay. bring down the thirst a couple notches, but I'm still in it. <laughs> There's potential. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Uh Susan, is there any last thing that uh, Sarasi would be doing? Am I allowed to do whatever or? Yeah, just like a closing thought or, or a closing act. Well, uh, this ridiculous cramp has wrecked my health, so I'm going to drink that health potion. Perfect. And then, no, wait, the masks, we're all going, we're all picking up all the masks, <laughs> and we're throwing them into the fire and saying never again okay. this pattern. <laughs> I love it. So then, yeah, as as the masks are, are crackling in in this fire and and you know breaking apart, um, you know you take a moment to collect yourselves and uh, you know take a deep breath, knowing that you have uh, done some good work today. Hopefully, um, and so yeah, so we'll, we'll bring it to a proper close, uh, proper close there. Um, so yeah, so thanks again uh, for playing. Uh, for, that was that was phenomenal. Uh, thank you to everybody who was watching. Um, and for tuning in, especially to everybody who donated um, to Reach Out Response Network. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, I'll be doing the draw this week uh, for the critique from Susan um, and our two uh, Mana Project Studio prize packs. Thanks to them again. Um, and yeah, so if you haven't entered the giveaway yet, um, it's still possible to do so. Uh, people have been screaming about it in the chat. So if you want to enter that, please do so in the next couple of days. Um, and then, yeah, tune in. I think our next bag of giving game is January 29th. Um, which will be uh, Tales from the Loop, uh, which Brandon O'Brien will be DMing with, um, who's in that? Uh, Darcy Little Badger, Premi Mohammed, uh, Nathan Burgoyne, who's another Ottawa author, and, uh, oh, and Greg Wilson, actually, uh, will be the fourth uh, player for that. So uh, tune in for that January 29th. It's going to be a blast. Um, and yeah, thank you to everybody for, for joining us tonight. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, and uh, yeah, actually, the, the I don't know if you want to just briefly mention what each of you, including you, Brandon, uh, where folks can find stuff about you folks on the Internet, uh, information to be able to gather more about these amazing players. I thought you might want to talk That's about That's not a bad idea. Um, I'll go in reverse order from the introduction. So, uh, Susan, where can people find your work, your very excellent work? Or you as a person? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Silly Syntax. Um, where I talk about goth things and Satan most of the time. 
Um, and also at uh, WordPress, Susan Palumbo at WordPress.com. Is that what it is? I don't know. It's something like that uh, where you can find all the stories and such. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Jane. So I am also on Twitter. It's just my name. So at Jane Gates. I'm, I've gotten a little more active there, but I'm kind of random in what I post. So a lot about the dogs. I also have a website, janegates.com, which has a list finally of uh, a lot of my works, the anthologies I've edited, my short story collection, and a couple of other things. Mr. Arlie Sorg. I'm co-editor in chief at Fantasy Magazine. That is fantasy-magazine.com. I'm on Twitter at arliesorg.com. Website is arliesorg.com. And I'm senior editor at Locus Magazine, which is Locus Mag. Um, and I, if I can plug early as well, um, uh, he is, uh, does phenomenal tweets every week, kind of like encouraging thoughts and, and uh, stuff to help fight the brain weasels for your creatives out there, which I know I really appreciate as a creative myself. Um, so he's worth following on Twitter if you were on the Tweety. Um, Derek, Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, my Twitter is just Derek Kunskun with uh, no, uh, no spaces. And uh, I'm the author of the Quantum Evolution series and the Venus Ascendant series. And so if you look at my name at any bookstore or Amazon or whatever, you'll, you'll find my books. And uh, that's it. And thank you, Brandon, for doing this. And to Greg as well. No, it was my pleasure. Um, and yeah, if you want to find me, um, I am, uh, what am I on Twitter? Uh, B underscore Crilly, C-R-I-L-L-Y on Twitter. Uh, which is where I'm most active, uh, or on brandoncrilly.com. Um, and I've got a newsletter on there you can sign up for if you want um, updates on upcoming dates for Bag of Giving, um, or news about my debut fantasy novel, which is coming out uh, later this year. Um, so you can find out stuff about that um, on my website. All right. Well, that's good stuff. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Brandon is a uh, is going to be sharing a publisher with me um, because Athis is also responsible for my Acres graphic novel and for the Gray Shade previously mentioned novel that's coming out later. So happy to have Brandon on board with them. And uh, great work from everybody. I'm going to let uh, when I cancel the Zoom call for the chat, I will still let you folks be in here because I heard some rumors that maybe people might want to come back and do a second round of this at some point later in the future. I'll let you all decide if you want to do that. That's up to you. But anyway, thank you so much to everybody. Chat me get some love for the players. And Brandon, thank you again to you and to Mike Underwood for putting together Bag of Giving. $355 raised is pretty good, folks. It's, that's, that's not bad for a couple hours' work um, towards a worthy cause. So good work to everyone in Nightfell. Um, but I will let the players go. Thank you all, and I will see you down the line. Bye for now. All righty. And uh, that, folks, is going to do it for us for this evening. I hope you folks enjoyed it today. I really did. Uh, it is always fun to watch um, Battles of Krampuses. You know, that's that's what else could you possibly want? Um, if you like what you saw and heard today, just a couple of reminders. Do please support the Bag of Giving uh, charity, which this month is, again, the uh, Reach Out Response Network. If you type in exclamation point reach out, you can find out about that. Thank you to those who also gave gift subs and followed the channel and stuff like that. During a Bag of Giving session, I don't, don't push my stuff a lot but I certainly appreciate it if people are able to jump on board and support me as well and there are many ways to do that which you can find if you come check out my stuff at other times and speaking of that I will say that the channel has got a lot of tabletop and story based narrative work that we do and on Tuesday at noon eastern we are going to have a big 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 major announcement about my adventures in Middle Earth campaign which has Hugo winner Amal El Matar in it and uh, professional SFF author Brad Bollier and professional cartoonist Terry Toons and professional voice actor and audiobook narrator Trendane Sparks. So you will want to be here for that. Um, I'm extremely excited about it. It is a big deal for the campaign and for the channel. So I hope you will be here for that announcement coming up uh, on noon Eastern this coming Tuesday, the 11th. Um, but otherwise, I want to thank everyone for being here. We had a solid turnout tonight for a Sunday afternoon. And uh, I will be back with a bag of giving stuff in a few weeks, playing Tales from the Loop. I will be playing it, and Brandon's the GM. And so, the not Brandon Curley, but Brandon O'Brien. And so that means that there will be feels because that's what happens when Brandon GMs a Tales in the Loop game and I'm in it. Actually, anytime I'm in a Tales in the Loop game, there are feels because, man, that game... 
That game nails the experience of growing up in the 80s, let me tell you. Anyway, uh, you will want to watch it. It's a great group of people, and I am excited to be a part of it. But I will see you folks on Tuesday for Adventures in Middle Earth and for that big announcement at noon Eastern. Thank you to everyone who made this an awesome stream. Again, please follow the channel, and I'm not going to say anything else other than to say thank you uh, and to support Bag of Giving. Thanks to my wonderful mods, Arudinel, The Rising Tides, and Trifity Mats, who are the best in the business. Thank you to the subscribers and Patreon supporters, Arudinel, Rising Tides, Trifity Mats, Brandon Crilly, uh, Crit Twitch, Garlic Tofu, Phoebe Barton, Prince Justin, Turbo Tango. Thanks for all the gift subs given out today to folks as well. Thank you to Aradox, Black Fury, Coffee, uh, Chev Hunter. Thank you to Corbin the Average, Eyes of Wolf, Galadriel Bot, totally not a bot. Thank you to Light and Passion. What's up, Light? Thank you to Malachi the Red. Thank you to Mrs. Dunsel the Nonstop, both of whom are supporters. I don't know why it's not listed there. Thank you to uh, No Not on Beast Contest. Thank you to The Kids Are Asleep. Uh, it is a great pleasure to have had all of you on board. Thank you all so much. And and uh, I will see you folks Tuesday for Adventures of Middle Earth. Special thanks again to Brandon Crilly and to Mike Underwood for Bag of Giving and to Brandon Crilly and the entire crew of the cast of uh, Nightfell today. That's it for me, and I'll see you folks on Tuesday. Until then, have a good night. Bye, all.